Welcome back to another live stream. Hi! <laughs> How is everyone doing? Okay, as usual, before we go too far, I just want to make sure the audio, the video, the stream, everything is okay. Uh, the audio doesn't have weird echo or you can even hear me. Or am I just mumbling to myself and it's mute? Or you can't see anything at all in, on your end. Let me just enable my own video. Uh, from my screen, it looks okay. I disable audio monitoring because what's displayed live, sorry, what you can hear live and what I'm speaking now is totally different so I'm hearing my own echo right delayed echo so I can't monitor myself you guys will have to tell me if everything is okay so judging from a few comments that we have received everything is good so far so thank you so much let me start by saying Selamat Hari Raya Aidil Fitri happy 8th to Anyone who celebrates this amazing, amazing festival, Hari Raya Adifitri is perhaps the largest festive celebration in Malaysia. So, eight Mubarak, happy feasting, happy celebrating, and I hope you guys have a joyous time. I hope you guys have a blessed celebration with your friends and family. All right, and today we have some really cool topic to talk about, which is really really amazing and I can't wait to share with you guys. The main topic is why get Micro Four Thirds in the year 2024? Is Micro Four Thirds still relevant? And we're going to tackle from two perspectives, whether it's from the hobbyist, enthusiast, or a working professional. We'll get into that a little bit later. And of course, I'm gonna share some photographs with you guys. There is a series of photographs I've just taken yesterday. I can really, really, really looking forward to share them with you guys. But first, as usual, let's say hi to some amazing people. We have some, quite a lot of people in the chat already. Squidat, hey Squidat, how are you? Very, very nice to see you, Squidat. Squidat says hello from Orlando, Florida. Hey Squidat, thank you so much for joining the stream. Squidat continues to say I bought a Pantex K7 DSLR with lens for under $100 last week. What a bargain, man. Less than 10,000 shutter clicks. I'm feeling rich. You should be feeling rich, and I hope you got some amazing shots with that. What, what a bargain, hey. Robin's channel has membership now with early and exclusive content, yes. I'll talk about a little bit on the membership on my channel, which I have just enabled last week, and the perks that you can get. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, let's, let's say hi to more people. Skudat says, those are supposed to be two separate ideas. Yes, you mesh two different subjects in one chat. Seagulls says, hi Robin everyone. Hey Seagulls, very, very nice to see you here. Welcome to the stream. It's Sea Eagles from Australia. Hope everyone will enjoy this live event. Cheers. Thank you so much, Seagulls. I hope you enjoy it as well. Next, we have Henning. Henning says, hey Robin. Hey Henning, how are you? Today, I managed to be here from the beginning. Thank you so much for being here from the beginning. I appreciate that. I had a freaking exhausting day and week so far and hope you will bring me back to life with your never ending enthusiasm and energy. I don't, I don't think I have never ending enthusiasm and energy. I'm just usually very cheerful. I'm always very appearing very happy, smiling because I, I love the things that I do, right? If I go out and shoot, if you see me smiling, it means that I really enjoy my photography, my shuttle therapy, right? If I'm out hanging out with friends, if I'm uh, talking to my friends, it's because I love my friends. I really do. And if you don't see me smile, then you know something is wrong, right? <laughs> and very nice to see you here, Henning. And I hope you've had some good rest or do get some good rest after all this exhausting, uh, whatever that's happened in your life. Hey. Mick says, hello from Thailand, Mr. Wong. Hey, Mick, how are you? Very nice to see you here. Jeff Painter. Hey, Jeff. Very nice to see you. Jeff says, hey, Robin and fellow enthusiasts. Nice to see you here. DK say, yo. Yo, DK. <laughs> VV21 channel says, yo, from Malaysia. Hey, Malaysian, how are you? Salamat Hari Raya to you. Lucas say, bro, Robin. Bro, Lucas, how are you? Nice to see you in this stream. Viper Gamuka, hey, how are you? How are you, Vi Viper Gamuka? Good evening, Robin. Hope you are doing well. Looking forward to pictures you'll be sharing with us tonight. 
a member has uh, just entered the chat. Jason said, hello. Hey, Jason, how are you? <laughs> Jason says, are you referring to me, Anime Woo? Okay, you guys are talking to each other, no worries. And Trill says, how do you all from Washington, D.C.? Hey, Entry, very nice to see you again. Thanks for joining the stream. And Watch says, hi, Robin, great topic for today. Hey, Watch, thanks for joining the membership and thanks for being in the stream. We're going to say hi to a few more people. Then I'm going to talk about a little bit of updates about my life, what's happening on this channel. And I'll talk about the membership, right? Let's say hi to a few more people. Sho Chan says, hello from Singapore. Hey Sho, how are you? Nice to see you. Anime Womiru says, hello from Kuala Lumpur. Hey, how are you? Don at large says, hello Robin, good to see you again. Hey Don, very nice to see you. How are you? Hassan says, greetings from Turkey. Happy Idul Fitri. Hey, Eid Mubarak to you too. Happy feasting, man. Have a great celebration over there. I know it's a huge thing in Turkey as well. Anime says, why get micro in 2024? Because of trends. Everyone wants to post on Instagram. Not the photo they took, but the camera body. Well, that's not true. If you go to my Instagram, uh, links in description below, you can find it very easily. I don't post photos of cameras. It's just photographs, pictures that I took with cameras. That's the same with uh, my blog articles or the videos that I share here. Every single week, I have a new video released on every Monday. And in every video, I will make sure that I have fresh photographs for you guys to see. And there's like no pictures of the camera. It's just photos taken with the camera. So that is not true. And I've, I've also seen some really amazing photographers on Instagram, uh, both locally in Malaysia and international uh, photographers. By saying international, I mean photographers outside of Malaysia, in case someone misunderstood that. Um, I've seen a lot of amazing content. They don't take photos of cameras. That's just ridiculous, right? Sixers Batmaster says, greetings all from Staten Island. Hey, Sixers Batmaster, very nice to see you here. Thanks for joining the stream. Let me just say, oh, we have a super chat so early on. Thank you so much, Christopher. Thanks for the super chat. I appreciate the support. Really, really appreciate that. Jason says, is it because we are subscribers and that's why there are stars next to my name and some few people here name? No, Jason, it's because you are a member. So you bought the membership, remember? You joined the membership of this channel. So you get the star and the color of the star will change over time. So after one, one month, two months, after a year, two years, it will show your loyalty to this channel, right? So if you un unsubscribe, Jason, if you just disable the membership and you restart again, you will lose that privilege. <laughs> okay, Clint. Hey Clint, how are you? Clint says, good morning all. Good morning to you too, Clint. Having a Las Vegas trip this week and soon leaving for the Grand Canyon with my EMR Mark III and the 714 Pro. Wow, that is amazing. Okay guys, uh, just uh, sort of like a preemptive for you guys. I'm trying something different. I'm adding a few filters to this video so it looks a little bit different from usual. But that also means that it may stress the software or tap the hardware a little bit more and there might be a chance for this to freeze so if it does i'll just disable the filters right and we'll get back to normal so do bear with me i'm trying things i've done this before like uh two months two or three months ago it, at the beginning of the year i enabled some filter and it froze a few times i don't know if you, any of you remember that so if that happens don't panic i'm still here it's just a simple uh software problem i can just quickly fix it right so don't worry but then again we haven't had any crashes or disconnect or any problems, any bugs ever since, right? For quite some time. My life, my live streams, they have been very, very smooth and problem-free recently. So that's why I'm daring to try new things now. Hernan says, Robin, hopefully you may have seen the first comment in section before start this live. I think it's a good start talk point to talk. But Hernan, I think it's also more polite to say hi two people first before I start rambling on and on and on and ignoring everyone here, right? I'm sure all of everyone is here to say hi, hi, hi. And I think it's nice to just respond to people. That's how people talk to each other. <laughs> Henning says, sound and video talk. Thank you so much. Yaya says, sound is good. Shou Chang also confirmed that. Jeff says, stream is good. Hugh Tran says, good. Clint says, sounds great. Thank you so much, Clint. 
how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. I've been a little bit busy. I've got some shoots uh, earlier this week. And then there was this uh, high rare celebration, Ideal Fit Tree. And uh, yeah, we've been going around with some of my friends. And yeah, I, I went for some shuttle therapy session. And I managed to squeeze one video this week. I did one video as well. So all is good. All right. Edwin says, uh, all good. Thank you so much, Edwin, for confirming. Rich Turner says, sound of Perth. Thank you so much. Edwin says, nice to meet you here. Nice to see you also, Edwin. How are you? Kari, hey, Kari. Kari says, hi, Robin. How are you so well? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Anime says, did you know Mauno is really amazing quality like that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's cheap. So what, what happened was, there was a little bit of history to this. During the pandemic, uh, of course, during the MCO uh, lockdowns, I was stuck in my room. I couldn't go out to take photographs or make videos, right? And there was this really weird uh, government mandate that, or law that they passed on that uh, if you're caught shooting video outside or taking photographs, you can be fined 10,000 ringgit. That's about 2,005 US dollars. No joke. And when we were in a time where we don't have income for, at that time, we don't know how long it's going to last, a year or two years, right? We don't know if it's going to last months, years. And to get fined 2,500 US dollars, that is very heavy. So I thought to make content in my room, I will need a better microphone, my usual microphone that I use outside. At that time, it was only $2. Believe it or not, I started making YouTube videos. If you go back to the start, the YouTube video that I made here, I used the microphone that costs only $2, the lavalier microphone, the first one. Of course, now I've upgraded to Sennheiser wireless and everything is more expensive and more technical and advanced. But I started with a $2 lavalier microphone. And when I use it in my room, it did not sound good. There was too much noise, too much echo, uh, room reflections. That's why I look around for the cheapest condenser microphone that I can find on the internet, which I can plug into my camera directly and found a Maono microphone, which I bought for less than 100 ringgit or about 20 US dollars. So I tried it. I was very happy with the results. You can go to my podcast uh, list. So there's a playlist of the podcast series that I did in my room and all of them were, were shot or I used the, the Maono condenser microphone. And then I also used the condenser microphone to go live earlier on, the black one, which you guys saw. But uh, I wasn't happy with the sound because because it records too much room reflections. There was, uh, I have hard walls, hard floors, and hard ceilings, right? And then um, I'm just next to my window and outside sometimes I can hear like a motorcycle running by, I can hear some blaring sirens. So it picked up too much environmental noise. So I wasn't happy with that. So that's why I invested uh, in this new Maono uh, dynamic microphone. So I was already happy with the previous Maono. I mean, it's not like I was entirely unhappy. The sound quality was really good. So I thought, okay, let's get a dynamic microphone, which will record less of the environmental sound. So then I found this for about uh, less than 300 ringgit or about, let's say, uh, 70 US dollars or 70, is it 70? No, I think it's about, yeah, 60, 60 US dollars, if, if, my, if my calculations is correct, right? Yeah, it sounds pretty good, hey. For Tito says, hey Robin, hey for Tito, how are you? Always love listening to your streams. Thank you so much, thanks for being here. Hassan says, greetings from Turkey, happy Adil Fitri. Thank you so much, greetings to you too. Seagull says, hey Robin, great audio, at Mubarak, great health to all. Thank you so much. Yeah, anime. <laughs> yes, uh, for the Malaysians who don't know, Jason, my friend Jason Liu, is quite a legendary um, blogger back in the days. He was the famous food blogger that we all admire, and I was so, so privileged and happy to be his friend. All right. Okay, let's check if I have a few more. Oh, we have another chat coming in from a member. Van, hey Van, how are you? Van says, video and audio looking good, Robin. Thank you so much, Van, for being here. Very nice to see you again. And we have to go and plan something very, very soon. Hey, before the month is over. All right, I'm going to pause on the chat here for a bit. All right, and... Um I'm going to start talking about a little bit of updates of what's happening in my life, or this channel particularly. On Monday, uh, just a few days ago, I released a video talking about this camera, which is the original Olympus OMD EM5, right? which I think is a true wow camera. It was game changing. Uh, it was the first serious mirrorless camera in the market and Olympus showed everyone how to make a real mirrorless camera 
you include an electronic viewfinder, you have a tilt screen, you have five axis image stabilization, you make it really robust and sturdy with metal construction, you put in really fast autofocus, and then there's the new image sensor, which is the 16 megapixels image sensor that, that has drastically improved image quality compared to the predecessors and even brings the gap closer to the APS-C at that time and the whole camera is so small so compact and yet it has this vintage look which they drew inspiration from their OM DSLR sorry OM SLR film camera lines right so yeah this was I thought it was a wow factor for Olympus at that time it put them in the map and everyone was trying to copy the DNA of this camera and yeah it was a huge success I talk about that in my latest video on Monday if you haven't watched that please please check it out I also shared some really cool photographs which I've shot uh, on the streets so yes and secondly announcement in case you don't know I have enabled the membership on my channel all right so this is the membership to join the membership, it only costs you about a cup of coffee. It's not expensive, but you get quite a few interesting perks. Number one, you get early access to all my new videos. You get to watch them 24 hours before everyone else, right? How cool is that? And number two, there will be a members only live streams, right? So this is a public live stream. I'm not taking this away. This public live stream will be still be available. I will still go live every week, every Thursday night here in Malaysia. Here is night, if you can see outside. Uh, that's not going, going away but there'll be an additional members only live stream why I'm doing this because you see there's like hundreds of people now currently there are if I check the numbers 132 concurrent people watching this stream right from the start so you're fighting with everyone to interact with me right so I have to sift through all the comments all the chats so if you go to the members only live stream which you can get uh, as a perk by joining the membership you can interact with me directly I can talk to you more <laughs> how does that sound and of course the third perk is if you comment anything on any of my videos I will definitely reply to you first I can filter by members only and then I can see your comment and I'll reply to you first before everyone else trust me I receive hundreds of comments on my YouTube channel every day it's easy to, to see because now I have more than 300 videos every day. If I just receive one new comment in every single video every day, I receive more than 300 comments already. Sometimes if the video topic, a new video topic is a really heaty one and everyone has something to say, it might rake up about 500 or even 1,000 comments. I have to go through all that until I reach your comment. Your comment is buried among all the hundreds and thousands of other comments, right? So if you are a member, I get to see your comment first there's a filter to put your comment at the top I can get to you directly you get party replies from me all right so I just want to interact with you guys more I want to give you guys a little bit in return because a lot of you have been very supportive you have been here from the beginning a lot of you have been here for a long time uh, whether you have supported me through buy me coffee which is a link up here or you can find it in the description below a lot of you have also contributed directly to my PayPal which is very generous uh, some of you have also bought from my affiliate links from BNH and Amazon I think that's one of the best ways to support me because you don't have to spend extra money you just buy whatever you want and I earn a little bit of commission right so this is a new way it's just a choice uh, another alternative for you to support me which is not expensive and yet you get more in return right so yeah any support is appreciated making videos uh, creating content and even doing these live streams they all cost money like I said I got this new microphone and I have to buy the new New windshield and there's a microphone arm and this this 4k capture card there's the lights everything they cost money so I use my own funds for all these resources right so with you guys with your contribution it can definitely push me to improve my video production quality and of course to encourage me to make more content right and yeah every Monday every Thursday I'm not gonna take anything away there will be new videos every Monday the members will get to see them 24 hours earlier and Thursday there will still be live streams for public and once a month there'll be a members only live stream I'll publish in the community board so those of you who have just joined a member if you're wondering when the members only live stream will be uh, I haven't decided on the exact uh, day or time uh, but 
keep an eye out on the community board on my YouTube. I will definitely publish an announcement there soon, all right? So yeah, do consider supporting me. <laughs> I'm gonna drink some coffee first. I'm gonna show off my Canon L lens mug. I'm not sure I can get it in focus. There we go. <laughs> coffee, 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 hmm. All right, let's sift through the comment. Let's see if there's any members commenting. Nope. Huri Serafin says, howdy from Orlando, Florida. Hey, Huri Serafin, very nice to see you here. Jose says, hi, Robin. Hey, Jose, nice to see you here. Beat Robot News today says, Robin, the OCL Deep Prime does restore lost color due to high eyes, so it's not noise reduction that does this. Beat Robot News today, I'm not saying that colors are lost. I'm saying that colors have shifted. So it's not just the colors losing. It's not the like desaturated, no. It's the color fidelity that suffers. So if you are, let's say you're shooting a low ISO, let's say ISO 200, you see certain color gradients. There's more colors. Let's say it's not just one flat red, right? There's shades of orange, pink, purple. Uh, there's a lot of different magenta in the red, which is predominantly red, but you get to see all these shades, right? If you shoot a high ISO, it's all just red. You don't see any gradient and no software is going to be able to restore that fidelity. Without that, the image looks very flat, very artificial, very digital. That's, that's why skin tones suffer at high eyes or if you're shooting people in very bad lighting situations. Because to make up a realistic skin tone, there is so many colors. There are so many colors on the skin. Different shades of green, yellow, orange, red, purple, magenta, whatever. Yellow, whatever, even whites. There's so many colors on the skin. And once you go high eyes, so it's just flattened. No software is going to be able to restore the fidelity in the colors. Trust me. Also, like a lot of people say, hey, Robin, have you tried this? Have you tried this? Yeah, I've tried everything. And if it works, I would have used it. Trust me, right? Serpat says, good evening, Robin. Hope you are well. How warm is it in KL now? It is now 29 degrees in my room. I think it's quite hot recently in Kuala Lumpur for the past few weeks. And very nice to see you here, Serapat. Tobias say hello again from Germany. Hey Tobias, nice for you to join. Thank you so much. Edwin says, first time meeting you here. Been watching all your YouTube videos. I learned a lot of micro four thirds knowledge from you. No worries, Edwin, and I hope you stay around. And yeah. Juanjo, 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 sorry if I get your name wrong, says hello from Malaga. Hey, how are you? Shunta, hey Shunta, how are you? Shunta says, Robin, thank you for the fun live stream. The cherry blossoms are in full bloom in Kyoto now. This weekend, I'm shooting a video with Micro Four Thirds camera and lens. I envy you, Shunta. I do want to see the cherry blossoms in person. That's one of my to-do lists, right, in my bucket list. I'll probably make it happen in the next few years. I'm so jealous of you and do go out and take more photographs. Hey. Patrick, Patrick says, hi from Perth, Western Australia. Hey Patrick, how are you? Christopher says, I shot the eclipse on Micro Four Thirds. Well, congratulations. I hope you got some really cool shots. Herlin says, hi Robin, was really, really catchy. The joke with Solanto, sorry for the wrong name. Yeah, it's Mati Solanto. Really shocked me, it was a bump in my head. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Herlin was referring to the April Fool's joke, which we did Obviously, on the 1st of April, I appeared on Mati's channel and Mati came over to my channel. So there was like a crossover event. And Mati trash talk about me, like saying that I left Micro Four Thirds. And I trash talk about Mati saying that, oh, he hates Sony. He was pretending all this time. He was lying to you guys. It was all fun. It was all fun. We had too much fun making those videos. And I'm glad you enjoyed it, Hernan. Arfido says, hey Robin, first time on lock in here live from the Philippines. Hey Arfido, very nice to see you here. I hope you do stay around for a little bit. All right. Okay, just make sure I don't miss anything. Looking around for a while. Henning says, guys, don't, li don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Samuel says, hi from Canary Islands. Hey Samuel, nice to see you here. Thanks for joining the stream. Jose says, hi Robin, I recently bought a Zuko 14 150, which will accompany my Leica 15, Lumix 25 and Zuko 45. Love Micro Four Thirds system, yes. I think, micro, I think those are like really small lenses, hey, and it just makes Micro Four Thirds so amazing. 
Camille says, Hello from Poland. What do you think? It's a good option to upgrade lens from Panasonic 45 to 150 to 40 to 150 f4 pro i use it to shoot product and uh, in studio portrait i think you will get a lot more from 40 to 150 f 2.8 pro so if you don't have the 45 to 150 then if it's your first lens to start out then i'll probably push the 40 to 150 f4 pro but i think the 40 to 150 f 2.8 will give you a lot more advantage uh it is obviously f2.8 so in certain situations when you need to have more light uh, that will be a better lens for you and also i feel that the 40 to 150 f2.8 is a little bit sharper in comparison to the 40 to 150 f4 pro just a little bit you need to pixel peep like really scrutinize to see the difference Hi from Thailand says, hey Robin, me again. Love from Thailand. Hey, thanks for being here. Been a while since I bothered your live videos. <laughs> no worries, welcome back. Uh, I ordered McDonald's cheeseburger to eat while watching. Yes, let's do this. That's right. Memorang Laut. Hi Robin, hi everyone. Memorang Laut. Shariel, right? Hey Shariel, how are you? <laughs> Sayo Chan says, Hello, Olympus Cine 5 to 300 is a good lens. Yes, and I have talked about that lens before, so I don't want to waste too much time talking about it. Let me just find, find it for you, my review of that lens. Let me just quickly see if I can get... Okay, maybe not. Let me just go here. View my channel. Give me a moment, guys. Just a little while. Okay, found it. So all I have to do is just extract the link. Come on, come on, come on. Extract. Why can't I extract the link? Which is interesting. This, oh, there it is. Copy, right. So Sayo Chan, if you haven't watched this video before, go to this video that I have just put in the chat. Okay. And uh, so I tested the 75 to 300. I brought it to the zoo, the national zoo in Malaysia and tested the lens, right? So do look at the review. And if you have any questions, you can always ask me later, right? Okay, let's move on to the next chat. Hernan, is you guys talking to each other? No worries. Big Robot News says, Batman has a Olympus EPM2 in his utility belt. <laughs> Maybe a GM1 as well. Hey, it's amazing how he can fit so much in his utility belt. It's crazy. Hmm. 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 Hernan says, sorry. All right. Uh, greetings from Mexico. My bad. Here in Mexico, it's 8.14. <laughs> no worries. Corey says, uh, 70 to 300 Mark II is a good lens. Are you talking about 75 to 300? We're talking about 75 to 300, right? Yeah. Miran says, hey Robin, great to see you live. Great to see you here. Audio and video looking great. Thank you so much. Anthony says, hi Robin, from Anthony from the Newfound and Labrador, Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada, Iceberg Alley. Wow, that is a long name. <laughs> Welcome to the chat, Anthony. Nice to see you again. Kenny says, that's a great size camera too. Yeah. Memorang Lao says, we need a Mark IV stat. <laughs> Mark IV? Which Mark IV? I thought we only had like, we're talking about OM, OM if you're talking about OM1, it's OM1, OM1 Mark II, right? We don't even have OM1 Mark III. Yeah. Bogan says, hi Robin, greetings from Romania. You are my Olympus and Marco Fothers mentor from two weeks. Uh, oh, you've just discovered this channel for two weeks. Welcome to the channel. I have an Olympus EP1 and 1442, 40 to 150 lens. And from your advice, I got the 45 uh, f1.8. I love street and I, I like street and portrait photos. Yeah, that's the perfect uh, lens to, if you want to do some portraits. It can give you some really nice blur, amazing perspective uh, compression. And yeah, I, I love the lens. Rob S says, wonderful news, Robin. Getting married. He wants all of us to shoot his wedding. <laughs> <laughs> hey Rob, it's not April Fools anymore. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know. I'm still single, but I'm not available. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna pause on the chat. Uh, time check is almost half an hour past ten, so we should dive right into the topic, right? I spent half an hour saying hi to everyone. Uh, so, topic tonight is why 
get micro four thirds now, right? So there are so many choices, I don't deny that. And I have been quite vocal and very loud in saying that uh, the Micro Four Thirds players, specifically OM Digital Solutions and Panasonic, they are not doing enough recently. Uh, competition is catching up, so whatever that is making Micro Four Thirds unique or special in the first place, competition also have a lot of these features already. For example, a live composite, it was amazing for Olympus for a period of time, but now almost everyone has it, right? And then there's the five assist image stabilization, Olympus was ahead of the game. And once you've experienced the image stabilization, you cannot go back without with using a camera without the image stabilization. And now almost everyone has it, at least in one form or another, in the higher level cameras, right? And Olympus cameras, uh, when the OM1 was launched, everyone was raving about the BERT AI detection. It was so wonderful. But guess what? I think Sony, Canon, Nikon, everyone, even Fuji has BERT animal AI detection autofocus. And for some reasons, Micro Four Thirds, at that time when they were launched, uh, not when they were launched, during the era of EM5 or EM1, the autofocus was ahead of everyone else. They were even better than Sony. They were way better than Fuji, right? So Canon and Nikon, they joined mirrorless, but they were not serious. Uh, the Canon's EOS M, that was a joke. And then Nikon's One system is also like a joke. They were not serious because they do not want to... Uh, they do not want to affect the sales of their DSLRs, which was still dominant at that time. Whereas Micro Four Thirds was looking towards the future. They know that mirrorless is the future. So they double down on computational photography. They, they have like high res shot. They have uh, all these amazing like focus stacking, all these amazing features that, that really, really improves our way of using the camera. And they also greatly impacted our photography, right? Uh, but now that I've, I've been very vocal, I'm saying that uh, Olympus or OM Digital Solutions and Panasonic, they should be doing more to push the R&D and give us a real wow camera. Now, that aside, yes, I've been quite vocal because I care. I am a Micro Four Thirds supporter and I really, really care about the future of Micro Four Thirds products. And I do want Micro Four Thirds to thrive. I want to see more innovative products and tech coming from On Digital Solutions and Panasonic. That's why I've been honest and I've been saying week after week that we need to see more progress, right? Uh, but having said all that, having said all that, I still believe in Micro Four Thirds and I still want to see a future, I want Micro Four Thirds to succeed. And I personally still actively shoot with Micro Four Thirds system, both for my paid shoots as a professional photographer. My clients hire me, I shoot photographs for them, I deliver to them and I get paid. And I use exclusively Micro Four Thirds system for my professional environment, no compromise. Uh, I'll talk about why in a little bit later. For my personal shoots, so it's a mix. For most serious stuff, let's say I want to do a project, I want to tell a story, I want to do something more serious, definitely Micro Four Thirds. Definitely Micro Four Thirds. But if I just want to play around, I, I'm a photographer, I'm curious about all kinds of gear. And let's say I see something new, something exciting, or uh, something in the used market that is very cheap, and I was curious about it before and I can afford it. I will buy these cameras and lenses and I'll try them. Like a full frame camera, for example, a, a Canon 5D or a Nikon D50 or the Pentax K01. So I've tried all these cameras. I still have them now. And from time to time, I'll still bring them out just for fun. Fun is the operative word here, right? And if you don't have fun, I think you shouldn't be doing any photography at all. So anyways, back to why I shoot with Micro Four Thirds. When I do my professional assignment or paid shoots, my main cameras are the EM1 Mark II, which is here. Let me just find it without destroying things. <laughs> so this is my EM1 Mark II, which I still love, which still performs very well today. This is my main camera that I bring to shoots. Uh, my backup camera is the OM1, which I, I can't show you now because OM1 is the one, the camera that I'm using for my live streaming. So you're seeing me through the OM1. Right, the, the lens that's attached, if anyone is curious about it, is the 15 f1.7. So this EM1 has been my workhorse since 
I think it was launched in 2016, right? I started using it as my workhorse in 20, late 2017. So wow, it has been like, what, six, seven years now I've been using this camera. It's still going strong, showing no signs of slowing down. Everything is still intact. It can The autofocus is still fast. Image quality is still amazing. Fire assist image stabilization still works. Everything works well. I'm not so sure about the weather ceiling though. I think the weather ceiling might be a little bit compromised because uh, any cameras or any, any seals that's made of rubber or any synthetic uh, material over time will disintegrate and once that happens water can get into the camera right so be careful but yeah and then you, for my shoots I use mostly prime lenses but I do have a, a zoom lens that I sometimes bring or oh, actually I, I do bring it most of the time though I don't bring it out uh, so this is the 12 to 40 f 2.8 which is my favorite lens I think it's one of the best zoom lenses out there standard zoom lenses right it has a bright f 2.8 aperture and the image is just so stunning and can go so close to the subject to do some close-up shooting sometimes if you don't need like extreme magnification this lens can do a little bit of like pseudo macro shots which is amazing i can just use this one lens to do most of my shots but i prefer to shoot with primes so i have i have nine f1.7 panasonic 15 f1.7 my nine is here let me just show you so i have the nine f1.7 uh which is amazing amazing lens right this replaced the 8 to 25 f4 i've solved that lens i also have the 15 f1.7 panasonic which you are seeing me through the lens now <laughs> i have the 25 f1.8 which is an amazing lens this is a 25 f1.8 all right i also use this a lot this is one of my most used lens i also have the 45 f1.8 which you saw which was attached on my ema mark ii 45 f1.8 and the other lens is the amazing 75 f1.8 this is 75 f1.8 right i think if you have used any of these lenses especially the 45 f1.8 and 75 f1.8 you can agree with me that uh these lenses are super super freaking amazing and it is the lenses that make it so amazing right like for example like you can argue like, oh, you know, like this f1.8 is not full front f1.8, it's f3.5. Well, like, or they said, oh, the, the 25 is not a 50, you know, 50 is 50, 25 is 25. Let's say you want to argue about 50 and 25. Okay, fine, right? Find a 15 millimeters. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have touched the microphone. Find a full frame 15 millimeters that is as small as this. This is the 45 f1.8. I know it's not exactly the same, maybe f1.8, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But to me, it's sufficient. We'll talk about sufficiency in a bit. But look at how small it is. Look at how tiny it is. Look at how small. Right. And it gives you a reach of 90. That's equivalent to the classic 85. And then this is the 75. I'm going to show this again. 75 f1.8. Look at how small it is. This is 150 equivalent, 150, 150 in, in this size. You know, like some, some people suggest, hey Robin, why don't you look at the equivalent 135 F1.8 or F2? Have you seen the 135 lenses? Have you seen the 135 lenses? It's like five times bigger and like three times heavier. And then like it costs like, Maybe five times more, like crazy. Have you seen the Nikon Planar 135 F1.8? Like ridiculous. Yeah, they'll say, oh yeah, but it's true F1.8. But the point is, you don't get these tiny lenses. Like find a, 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 a wide-angle lens that's as tiny as this, right? Yes, we can argue about equivalence. We can argue about, you know, depth of field later. I don't need that much depth of field in my jobs. In, in fact, some of my clients complain there's too much blur in their photographs from micro photos. Do you believe it or not? I'm not joking. Somebody say, Robin, in your next shoot, can we have less blur? Because we want to see the logo in the background, the company logo. Branding is very important. Don't blur off everything. Can you imagine or not? So instead of shooting a wide open f1.8, I have to stop them to maybe f2.8, which is still decent, right? So yeah, can you find anything as small as this? Say this is uh, 17. I also have the 17 f1.8. Can you find something as small as this with autofocus, right? And still with true f1.7 or f1.8, meaning that I can gather light 
calculating by light gathering capabilities, it's still a true aperture f1.8, f1.7. I know, equivalence is like f3.5, f3.4, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, this will never stop. But can you even find these lenses this tiny? Why is it important for these lenses to be tiny? Because I can carry all of them in one bag, I can run around without feeling like it's gonna rip my shoulder apart. I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> I'm turning 40 this year. I want to continue on to show until I'm 50, 60, 70 and beyond. If I don't take care of my health now, things are going to fall apart very, very quickly. So having lighter gear really will be not only game changing, but life saving. I've seen so many of my friends having all kinds of problem. They have slipped this carrying 70 to 200 and maybe two or three other cameras and lenses with them doing wedding. I have seen friends, a friend, this is true. She broke her wrist handling a Canon 5D Mark II and 7200. I have friends who had all kinds of problems. They have all kinds of back problems after shoot every time they have to put on, you know, the Salon Plus or the kind of patches that, that helps with the pain. I have a lot of friends who have knee problems, all kinds of problems, and they carry like, I don't know, in the bag it's maybe about 10 kilograms and I carry everything within just like two or three kilograms. No joke, right? So yeah, there you go. That's the most important thing is small, compact, lightweight, yet now I want to talk about sufficiency. Now, yeah, some people argue that yes, you know, like if you go full frame or, you know, the higher grade cameras, you'd get better results. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. In fact, there are situations where you need to go higher ISO and you need higher resolution. If that's the demand or your work, if the nature of your photography work requires such, let's say 100 megapixels, or you need to shoot at ISO 2800, or ISO 100,000 all the time, then of course, buy the equipment that suits you. But for the jobs that I do, I used to shoot weddings, I'm phasing out from weddings. Uh, I currently do a lot of corporate events, uh, private events, I shoot for private hospitals, I also shoot uh, portraits, a lot of portraits, I shoot, stage events, uh, stage performance, like music, concerts, uh, theater, dance, anything on stage, right? I also shoot a lot of uh, lifestyle products and I find that my micro photo system is sufficient. I've shared a lot of photographs with you guys over the years, some from my job. I can't share most of my job because let's say it's from the government or it's a private event. Of course, let's say that the private hospital will not like the, uh, some of the faces of their board members or the CEO to be published on my YouTube channel. That's not going to happen, right? So yes. They are more than sufficient. My clients have never complained. In fact, they're always very happy. They started to come back to me. And I found that in terms of image quality, resolution, dynamic range, height, so for what I do is more, more than sufficient. And I've shared them again and again and again here, right? And yes, we can talk about tech. I, I don't know how, like, I see a lot of these ambassadors, they, they keep talking about like, all this bird detection. Really? I know that it will make a difference if you're a wildlife photographer. Yes, it's a strength, right? It's a strength, but it's not a unique talking point anymore. Everyone has it. Some people talk about, I don't know, all kinds of like focus stacking. Everyone has focus stacking. And the focus stacking in, okay, I'm not, I'm not trashing focus stacking. I personally think it's an amazing feature to have. But you're also stacking JPEG images, right? Nothing wrong shooting JPEG. I don't want to get into the JPEG and RAW argument, but I would rather shoot RAW and stack myself in the software. If you're really serious about what you do, you will do that. And I really hope maybe one day, one of these solutions can have raw stacking in the OM1 Mark III maybe, that will be game changing, right? Anyway, coming back to the topic, why get micro four thirds? Small lenses, it will save your back, it will save your knees, you will have much more pleasurable shooting experience. You'll be more agile, more mobile. You can run around. Depends on your kind of job. Let's say you're a studio photographer. You don't need to run there. It doesn't make a difference, right? Because we all do different photography things. So for me, I need to run around. I need to go from one end to the other quickly. And I need to move. That's the only way for me to get more shots, right? And smaller, lighter systems help me to carry them easier. It's easier to handle. And I can change this quickly because these lenses are so small, right? Look at this. It's so small. All right, it's so tiny, right? I can just, whoosh, done. So imagine, right, you have a larger camera and a large, you have, to, you know how some people, they need to put down the bag on the camera, then slowly, like, you know, take the lens cap off and then, like, slowly, like, change the lens and then carefully. If you do that, 
all the shots are gone. I have to change lens. I Sometimes I don't even look at the camera and lens. I just change lens just like that. You know, and you have to react reflexively. And it's easier to handle this when your cameras and lenses are smaller, right? <laughs> All right, let's drink some coffee and get back to the chat. I'll continue on the part two soon, right? I'll continue on, no worries. Hmm. All right, let's make sure that there are no member comments so far. Yes, we have a member comment. Dr. Harris, hey, oh my bad. <laughs> Dr. Harris, you are a doctor lah, what your back? <laughs> and welcome to the chat, Dr. Harris, very nice to see you. All right, get, getting back to Konijo. Konijo says, hi Robin, hey Konijo, how are you? Konijo says, saludos from Mexico. Thanks for joining the stream, nice to see you here. Anthony says, yes, I agree. EM5 was built like a tank and to professional standards for a compact camera. And for the time, the resolution was not bad compared to the expensive cameras, yes. Brian says, hi from Lilongwe, Malawi, the warm heart of Africa. Hey, that's really far away. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, Brian. I have an Olympus EM10 Mark II and just got a 14 to 150 super zoom lens. Loving it. There is one very convenient and versatile lens to use. Big J says, I still use the original EM5. I think EM5 is quite an awesome, awesome camera. Martin says, hi Robin, how are you? I'm doing great, how about yourself? I'm a pet photographer currently using Fuji X-T5, but autofocus isn't cutting the cake. Have you tried the autofocus on the OM-1 Mark II and how does it hold up? No, I have no access to the OM-1 Mark II, I am so sorry. Brian says, my goal is to save enough to get the EM5, probably the Mark II. I think yes, the Mark II is definitely an upgrade from what were you using previously? You're using the EM10 Mark II, right? If you can, if you can, Brian, if you can stretch a little bit more, go for either EM1 or the EM1 Mark II. The EM1 will have some, in comparison to the EM5 Mark II, it's better built, fire assist image stabilization is better, and everything is improved, right? Hmm. Memorial says, boo, Canon. <laughs> Aww. James says, Robin, what is your opinion on the original G9? I'm looking to get into the Micro Four Thirds system and in general, this seems to be the best budget value proposition. I tried the G9 before, I have reviewed it. Let me just find my blog article. It's on maintenance site, by the way. I can't just explain everything in detail now. Hey, I hope you guys understand it. I'm way behind the chat. I want to get to everyone, but I will give you a summary. Just let me paste the link here. James, if you haven't seen this article, Please go to this particular article here. I've talked about the Panasonic G9 before. It was loaned from Panasonic. And yeah, I personally think that uh, now it is a good camera. Uh, as long as you don't need any serious video work or if you don't need the face detection or focus, face detection as in like, yeah, human face, as well as the PHASE to track uh, moving subjects. Uh, the video will have a lot of pulsing if you rely on the autofocus, unless you want to do manual focus, that's a different story. But then again, you have a lot of other options besides the G9, right? But I do feel that between G9 and Olympus EM1 Mark II, I prefer the EM1 Mark II, although the EM1 Mark II is a bit, is one year older than the G9. I personally prefer this. The hand grip is, is more comfortable. The, everything just works. I feel that fire assist image stabilization is a little bit better. And not to forget, if you trust the DSO Mark's website, if you look at the website, they compare the image quality between the G9 and EM1 Mark II. The EM1 Mark II is better than the G9, and especially shooting at high ISO. Low ISO is very similar, but at higher ISO, let's say ISO 1600, 3200, or 6400, uh, there is a clear advantage if you use the EM1 Mark II. All right. Ice Wide Open says, Hey Robin, at work and just join the stream. Let's do this. Yes, let's do this. I hope I'm not too distracting to your work. Hey. Rob S says, G9 is a great value. You guys are talking to each other, no worries. Memorandum says, I wish I can get my hands on the GM series now. Sadly, the prices are not as cheap as before. Yes, but then again, it's also discontinued, so I gotta be very careful. I have a friend who has a GM5. Things are starting to fall apart. After some years, even if you don't use it, things will break apart. This is just the nature of electronics, right? And if they do, then it will be very costly to fix them, or you can't even fix them at all. So just be a little bit careful, yeah? 
Slam Down says, good evening from Mauritius. Hey, really nice to see you. Still relatively new to the photography game, but saving up for an EM1 Mark II or three by end of this year, along with 75 to 300 and the 60 macro. That's a very, very good place to start. I think EM1 Mark II and three is perfect. I'm still using them as my workhorse. And these two lenses, I'm guessing you're gonna do macro shooting and a little bit of wildlife or birds. Very good place to start. Six of the says, it's talking to me. I shot partial eclipse in New York using Panasonic FZ80 Super Zoom Bridge Camera. None of the micro photo lenses have the 12,000, 1,200 reach. Was able to see sunspots using solar filter. There is, right? Currently, there is the 150 to 600. Hmm. So there is a micro photo lens with such reach, whether you want to spend the money or not. And you can even attach a teleconverter to go beyond that. <laughs> Hmm. Giga Colorscapes says, just notice OM Systems has nice black and white JPEGs. How come no one hypes, the out, hypes out the camera black and white? I guess because it's not true black and white, it's just a conversion. And a lot of people also have nice black and whites. Nikon people will say, dear Nikon black and whites is nice. Uh, Sony people will say, Sony black and white is nice. Leica people will say, well, our black and white is the best, you know? So like, of all the noise in the space, you just come in and say, hey, look at my Olympus. My oil system has nice black and white. I, I don't think that's nice. <laughs> Kamil says, thank you for your answer. Unfortunately, I can't buy the 4150 F2.8. I understand, I understand. James says, you guys are talking to each other, no worries. Hariza says, hello, Robin. Hey, Hariza, how are you? What do you think about the 20 F1.7 or 70 F2.8? Really want a small lens, but I don't know which one I should get. I have the 70 f2.8 before, please look it up on my channel. And I haven't talked about 20 f1.7 before, so I can give you a summary. I wouldn't recommend any of these two lenses. The 20 f1.7 is small, both lenses are small, but the, both lenses are also very, very, very slow in autofocus. If you don't mind the slow autofocus, then get a 20 f1.7. The 20 f1.7 is sharper, it's f1.7 versus f2.8. Uh, it's all around optically better, but I don't like the harsh uh, background blur. But other than that, I just hate the autofocus. It's just too slow to get anything done. Corey says, I sold my Sigma 16 and 30 f1.4 lenses yesterday and I'm using the money to buy the LX100 original. Oh, okay, very interesting decision. I hope you enjoy the LX100. Corey? Serpent says, I think with AI noise reduction getting fully fledged, more people will gravitate to micro four thirds as you can have compact gears as well as great image quality. That is provided that you don't mind spending time to go through your photographs, running them through the workflow of using AI noise reduction. Because AI, whether you like it or not, if you have a very powerful computer, it will still take some time. Like, let's say, for example, I've tried this. If I want to run, let's say, 500 photographs, it's going to take like hours, I don't know, two, three hours to render everything. It is no joke, right? Maybe not two, three hours, maybe one hour. But that is additional one hour or two hours of my time is slowing me down. So the point here is I'm delivering photographs to my clients without using the AI reduction. And they need maybe 500 shots, 1,000 shots. Depends on what you do. If you are a wedding photographer, maybe you're delivering 1,200 shots, right? Imagine how many relatives and the group photographs that you're taking. So anyway, if I'm being slowed down by say several days just because I want to use the AI reduction. That's not gonna cut it. And my clients, when they look at the photographs, they're happy with it, they're not complaining about noise. So why bother? You get what I mean? And if they say, that, okay, can you clean this up? Okay, fine, you gotta give me more time. So of course there's the process of negotiation, right? So the point here is sufficiency. Like I haven't found a situation where my image quality is not up to standard and also, it's, it's no secret. Once you go high ISO, like really, 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 really high, let's say to the max, right? 25,600 or 51,200 on the newer cameras or micro four thirds. You're not gonna just lose out on details. You're not just gonna get noise. Those are the least of your problems. Noise and the details, that's not a problem. We're gonna lose on contrast, micro contrast, the shades. You're gonna lose on color fidelity. The way the images look, it's just gonna be flat. It doesn't look like a real photograph. It looks like a painting. 
because it's only the micro contrast that sort of like creates the shape and makes the photograph look more three dimensional. It gives you that uh, that pop. It's the cut if you're shooting in color. It's the color fidelity that makes it realistic, or else the colors just gonna look very artificial, right? And that AI noise reduction is not gonna solve solve these problems. Daniel says, Hi Robin, regarding DSLR and DOF preview through the viewfinder, take your Canon 5D and 50 f1.8. The viewfinder background blur should look nearly the same at f1.8 and f2.8. Why do you ask me to do that? I don't see the point of doing that. <laughs> to achieve what? If let's say I'm taking my Canon 5D and 50 f1.8 out, I look at my photo when I look at the frame, all I want to do is just shoot, right? I'll so let's, let's say I'm taking a portrait of a stranger, the strangers in front of me. Hi. Can I take a photo of you? Say yes. Wait ah, uh, wait ah, uh, I need to do a preview. Wait, wait, wait. I mean, come on, that's not gonna work, right? All I do is did it, slap the mirror and get a shot, right? Yeah. Sirapat says, can you recommend a good camera strap and wrist strap for micro photo cameras? When do you use a neck strap and when do you use a wrist strap? I used to use neck straps long time ago uh, for wedding photography, right? And I stopped using them. Number one, my neck started to hurt. Uh, number two, man, I sweat a lot. I think if you are in Thailand, right, and people in, in Southeast Asia or tropical countries, we sweat so much. And after a day of soaking our sweat, of course, it's going to smell, right, the next strap. Uh, trust me, no matter how you wash it, no matter how, what kind of detergent you use, after a while, it's just going to continue to have that smell in it. And it's not nice. It's not nice. So I gave up on neck straps because of smell and because of the pain, right? I don't want to, to my neck to suffer in the long run. Uh, so I use wrist straps. My wrist straps are cheap wrist straps. These are bought from Lazada or Shopee, the online shopping platform. This costs like, I don't know, five ringgit. I wouldn't recommend them to anyone. The one they attach on the EM1 Mark II it's made of some synthetic material. It's also very cheap. This is like 10 ringgit or two US dollars. I wouldn't recommend this to anyone. You can find better ones elsewhere. Michael says, hello, do you still have the EM5? I just made a video with EM5. So Michael, go to my channel, go to the video tab, all right? It's the latest video, it's the EM5. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? I just said I have the EM5, right? <laughs> yes, so yes, there you go. Bogan says, and your joyful energy is contagious. We need more people like you in the world. Oh, thank you so much. You are too kind. Let me just quickly check something before I miss out on anything. All right. EM5 Mark IV. Ah, okay. You're referring to the EM5 Mark IV and the new EPO body and the new GM body. Yes. So here's the problem, right? People ask me, hey, Robin, I got a Mark II. So I'll like, what Mark II? EM1 Mark II? EM10 Mark II, or M1 Mark II, or EM5 Mark II. There's so many Mark IIs, or Canon 5D Mark II. <laughs> like, you know, please, please be a little bit more specific, right? Yeah. Pucho says, hello from New York City. Been in this camp since the Olympus E520. But then Olympus E520 was not a micro four thirds. The first micro four thirds camera was EP1. So it's technically a different camp. Although yes, they were from Olympus, Basically, you just remove the mirror and the optical viewfinder, pentaprism, whatever. But micro photos, today's topic is we have to be specific. If you're not specific, Leica, Hasselblad, Huawei, Samsung will join the chat, right? Someone will say, oh, my iPhone can take better photographs. So we gotta be really specific. So we're talking about micro photos, right? Which actually starts from EP1. E520 was not micro photos. I know because I have the E520. Jim says, I got a GH6 and Leica 1260 for 1,000 pounds locally. Then I picked up a 75 f1.8. Good God tier images. Yeah, I know, right? This lens, it makes a lot of... I mean, if you haven't used it, you wouldn't know. Once you have used it, and if you find a need for it, I know that it's, there's not a lot of use case scenario you can find for this lens because this, it gives you an equivalent of about 150. That is really, really, really long. But if you somehow can find a use case for this lens, like for example, I shoot stage, I need a distance, and I shoot like uh, events, so I shoot everything from, from far distance, this lens can give you some really, really amazing image quality. No joke. <laughs> Samuel says, I get micro four thirds for video in 2019 and now for photo two with EMX. 
Amazing. Memorandum says, I got the micro four thirds because of the small bodies, EPL and GM series. Yeah. Also, in some ways, Sony have to thank Olympus. I think, didn't they license the IS tech? No. Uh, a lot of people think that Sony somehow got the image stabilization from Olympus. That is not true. So Olympus released their first uh, Fire Assist IS in this EM5, right? So the Fire Assist IS tech is based on VCM, voice coil motor. Whereas the Sony, uh, which came out about one year later with the A7 Mark II, or two years later, one or two years later, uh, they also have the Fire Assist IS, but it's based on a different tech. There is some confusion because at that time, Olympus was under some financial scandal, perhaps the largest financial scandal of all time in the world. And they embezzled some money there and here. And uh, Sony was one of the saviors for Olympus. They invested in the company and in return, they get 20% share of Olympus overall. Not imagining, right? There's medical, there's uh, everything else, right? So Olympus as a whole, uh, Sony has 20%. But they may get some tech from Olympus. I'm not denying that. Not fire assist image stabilization because it was broken down very clearly. Sony has a diagram to show how the fire assist image stabilization work. They also, in some, if you can find the website, they also have some very brief technical explanation on the fire assist image stabilization technology, which is very, very, very different from what Olympus is doing and how Olympus implemented the fire assist image stabilization. So both are very different. So they saw that Olympus implemented fire assist image stabilization in this EM5 Mark, uh, Mark I, and then of course, subsequently the EM1. And soon after EM1, they launched the A7, remember? The A7 Mark I, which did not have image stabilization. It was only after the feedback of a lot of people that after they've used Olympus cameras saying that, oh my goodness, these image stabilizations are so amazing. After I've used it, I cannot use another camera without an image stabilization. That's why they quickly developed a half-baked image stabilization in the A7 Mark II. And even in the latest A7 Mark IV, the image stabilization isn't great. If you compare to, okay, okay, maybe it's about the same as what Olympus has created a long time ago, but it, it isn't great, right? So it's a different system. All right. Time check. It is one minute past 11, and I am going to drink some water. <laughs> yes, got to stay hydrated. Hey. Hmm. And also, let me have a quick check. We have 184 people live concurrently now. Hmm. And some coffee, of course, showing off my Canon L lens mug. Coffee again. Okay. Before I dive further, I think it's also a good time to welcome any new people who's just joined the stream. If you just joined this uh, in the past few minutes, welcome to the stream. And for those of you celebrating Hari Raya or Ait or Eid, uh, Salamat Hari Raya Adil Fitri to you. Uh, Eid Mubarak, as, uh, as I put here in the background. Happy feasting, have a joyous celebration, have a blessed one with your friends and family. I hope you have a great time, all right? And also a good time to remind you guys that I have enabled the membership on my channel. Just gonna pull it up again. With just the price of a cup of coffee. Uh, if you see the price is a little bit different, it's, this is set by YouTube. I cannot change the price structure, right? Uh, I think in, uh, in America, if you're in US, it's $5.99. So here Malaysia is 15. If you convert, it's not the same. So anyway, price differences aside due to currency exchange whatsoever. Uh, if you get this membership, if it's joined with just the price of about a cup of coffee, you get perks, right? And this is one way to support me and I want to give back, give you back in return. The first perk is you get early access to new videos. You see my videos 24 hours earlier than everyone else, right? I think that's really cool. And then every month there'll be one members only live streams. As you can see now, there's almost 200 people live. I have to go through all the comments. You have to fight with everyone to talk to me. So I will create a members only live stream. If you join the membership, you get to join this exclusive live stream where you can interact with me directly and I can speak with you more, right? And of course, the last perk is I will prioritize my re responses or replies to you, whether it's on this chat or in any 
any other videos. So if you have comments, so imagine I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on this channel. If just one person comment on every, if I receive one new comment on any, any of my videos, I receive hundreds of comments every day. So I have to go through all that. Your comments might have been buried. But if you join the membership, there's a filter that I can quickly see your comment and I'll reply your comment first before everyone else. All right, so there are also numerous other ways that you can support me. Besides this membership, you can also buy me a cup of coffee. There's also super chat on this chat. Uh, there is, you can send contributions directly to my PayPal or you can buy directly from my uh, affiliate links from BNH or Amazon. All links in descriptions below, right? So check them out. Find a way to support me. Any help is greatly appreciated. Will push me, encourage me to make more content. Will definitely improve my production quality. All right. Okay. Get back. Getting back to the chat. Samuel says lower price, lower resolution, same quality compared to any APS-C. Best sensor cleaning and weather sealing. That's my reasons. I have now the same lens for video and photos. Better than two systems. Yeah. All right. Sisters by Messers say, Robin, as far as lenses are going, I think APS-C is the format getting all the development. Sony S6700 autofocus is superior even to G9 Mark II and OM1 Mark I. Only image stabilization micro four thirds is superior. So that's not true. If you look at Sony, they don't develop their APS-C line. In fact, the APS-C line has never been more abandoned compared to before, right? Once they move to full frame, they just put all their money down on full frame. And the autofocus system on the S6700, it actually came from the higher grade full frame A7 Mark IV or A7 R Mark V. They just bring it out, bring it down to the S6700, right? Corey says, 12 to 40 f2.8 is my favorite micro four thirds lens. It is my favorite too. Watch says, did you say you use the EMR Mark II as your primary over OM1? Why is that? Wow, watch. You must be very, very new. I have made so many videos talking about this. I'm not going to repeat all of them here. But uh, in summary, uh, in terms of image quality, the OM1 and EMR Mark II are very similar. Uh, in terms of handling, I prefer the OM, uh, EM1 Mark II. The handling of the OM1 is poorer. And most importantly, autofocus, EM1 Mark II is better. That's the summary. If you want to find out all the details, I've shared, I've talked too much about this. I've shared so many videos. Feel free to dive back to my videos. Corey says, EMR Mark II is definitely Robin's workhorse. I want to sell my EMR X and get the EMR Mark III for my workhorse. Yes. Mm. Slamdown says, he's talking to watch reliability. He mentioned it in one of his videos not too long ago. Autofocus for steel sound was better on the old version. That is true. Meister says, hey Robin, hey Meister, how are you? Nice to see you here. A bit of a noob question here, but why do you do my aperture blades not look like they're close when I stop the lens down? Brightness changes on my LCD, but I don't see the blades closing on the lens. So I want you to turn the camera around and look at the aperture blades. Click the shutter button, like really click. When you take a photograph or does the shutter button so does the shutter blades close, right? I don't know if I can show you guys. Let me see if I have anything to show here. Let me try something quickly. If I can demonstrate on this stream. Ah, no camera, no battery. Let me see if I have anything with a battery. I think the biggest lens that I can demonstrate is the 75 f1.8. So give me some time. I'm changing lenses. Okay, this, this one should have battery inside. Okay, I'm on aperture priority mode. So if I stop down to say F7. Yeah, okay, this is perfect. I don't know if you guys can see here. Okay, so this is fully open, right? You can't see the aperture blades, correct? So I've stopped down to F7 and you can't, still can't see anything. That's because the Okay, I am going to flip this around. This is because the live view is showing live simulation and the simulation is not done using the aperture blades. They just give you a computer simulation of what you see is what you get. But I hope this works. Let me just change something quickly. But let me see, make, put this. If I, let's face the like. If I take a photograph. Oh, you can't see it. Because the light is on the opposite direction. See, it actually closes. Ah, not sure. 
The only way is if I shine the light directly into the lens. So anyway, I'm not gonna dwell on this, but take your camera and lens and try again. Click the shutter button, the aperture will close. Trust me on this. <laughs> All right. B Robot News says, uh, today says, I like the 135 f2.8, nice and small. The 135 f1.8 are a lot bigger. I use the 75 f1.8 all the time. Very happy. Yes, same here. Let me see if I miss anyone. No, I did not. I miss watch comments. Sorry about that, watch. Samuel says, the 75 f1.8 is the best lens in Micro Four Thirds by far. I use 10 years, the 200 f2, and it's similar with less weight and cost. Yes. And it's surprising, right? It's not expensive. Harissa says, the reason I got my Lumix GX9, Sony are heavy. Yes, that is true. Edwin says, I was a wedding photographer who used to carry two cameras with fusion lenses. Happy to shoot with Micro Four Thirds now. All right, congratulations. We'll come to the system. Jono X says, Hi Robin, do you think Micro Four Thirds will release newer compact bodies and higher megapixel sensors? It seems they only care about pro bodies now, OM1, OM5, G9, etc. It's very hard to tell what the strategy is. I'm no longer connected to OM Digital Solutions. They doesn't seem like they want to have a relationship with me. That bridge has been burned a long time ago, so I have no idea what they're doing. Uh, but for their, their own sake and for the survival of Micro Four Thirds, I really hope that they will come up with uh, new, smaller, compact camera bodies because that's definitely needed. And uh, you can see how successful Ricoh is doing with the GR3 and GR3X. They have gained a cult following with those cameras, right? And of course, the Fuji uh, X100 Mark VI is saw everywhere and the pre-order hit more than 1 million numbers. It's crazy. Kayo Cat says, Robin, I love how your Manglish begins to surface when you're speaking with increasing passion, referring to when you were talking about the small form factor of Micro Four Thirds. I am a Malaysian, so the reason why... I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how, what English I'm speaking. So when I was studying in Western Australia, Perth, I was in UWA. If I speak my Malaysian English, no one understands me. So I need to create something, some kind of accent, something. And one of my previous bosses said that he's, he's from uh, South Africa. So he told me that my English is very neutral. I don't know whether it's true. I'm not a native English speaker, so I can't tell you how my English is. So you guys are, some of you are native English speakers, so you guys should know English better than me. They said that my English is very neutral. So I, I take that as a compliment, I guess. Edwin says, I say yes to Micro Four Thirds. Of course, I say yes to Micro Four Thirds too. Nadim says, hi Robin, let's do this. Yes, let's do this. And Selamat Hari Raya to you, Nadim. Hmm. Hmm. Edwin says, I say no to Olympus OMD. Okay, okay. So you are supporting Panasonic, I guess. Samuel says, I've done a work with Eman X, 7 meters print, and take the same photo with Nikon full frame. And the Eman X with handheld high res was better than Nikon in tripod. Yeah, of course, there's more resolution, right? Yeah, so that's not fair. <laughs> I'll toss the name says, I've always liked the microphone system. It's a shame all budget options and small options are discontinued. Market is weird since COVID. I think it's... Uh, because we don't know what they're doing, right? So after COVID, obviously Olympus shut down, another company bore over. So it's a new strategy, GIP or OM Digital Solutions. We don't really know what they're doing. It seems like currently their focus is on wildlife, nature, outdoor. And, but someone just came out, right? I don't know if you guys seen the news on DP Review and Petapixel. Someone from OM Digital Solutions just came out and say, hey, Pen is coming back. Pen is coming back, right? So I don't think they are abandoning, abandoning the smaller cameras, I just feel that they shift their strategy a little bit because it makes no sense to abandon the smaller cameras. That's where the money is. Mm. Ah, you made it sound so why in general? So why? Why is so why? Neo says, hey Robin, hey Neo, very nice to see you. Any good photographer should be able to expose correctly and get a great image with any camera made in the last 10 years. From small small sensors to the way up. That is true, that is true. But not any photographer can shrink the size of the camera or make the weight of the camera lighter, right? <laughs> I obviously cannot do that. John, hey John, how are you? John is a friend. John says, carry three cameras, no need change lenses on the go. Wow, John. I wonder how your back is holding up. Hey, my one is dying already. <laughs> hey John, photo walk soon, John. 
Andrew says, people also forget that you can focus bracket manually. Is that ideal? No, but you can do it. And if you get good at it, it will provide the results. That is true. I think you're referring to focus bracketing, right? Harissa says, for the lens, also APS-C is heavier than most micro four thirds lenses. That is true. That is true. John says, DJI avatar is out for FPV for the channel. <laughs> Using DJI, what, what avatar too for FPV? What the hell is that? Let me, let me check. Is it just a now? Okay, let me just have a quick. It's a drone, right? FAV drone. Crazy. I don't do drone, John. <laughs> you go buy and I can play a bit later. Fortito says, what do you think of the Olympus EM10 Mark IV? I have a Canon M200, but it's not so fun. Lenses aren't as good as no image stabilization. I also want to make travel videos. Should I switch to Olympus? Okay, if you are just taking photos, I have a review for the Olympus EM10 Mark IV. Let me just go to that quickly. Guys, a lot of the questions, right? The answers are in my videos. Rather than me spending like 15 minutes and getting way behind the chat, you can just do a quick search on my videos and can find the answers there. Okay, let me just grab it. Okay, to, uh, Futito, here is... Here is the link to my EM10 Mark IV review. There is also another additional video where I talk about video shooting with the EM10 Mark IV. Let me just share. The second link, so the second one is the video on the EM10 Mark IV, okay? I hope that helps. Now, coming back to your questions, Futito, where were you? Photographs, no problem. I think it's an excellent stills photographer for the camera, but if you want to make video, there are some compromises, and I don't recommend EM10 Mark IV for video. In fact, I recommend EM5 Mark III or EM1 Mark II if you can get. I think the price is not different if you can find a used unit in the market. Use you need in the, in the marketplace, right? Uh, the reasons are, number one, there is no microphone input in the EM10 Mark IV. If you're serious about your video work, you will want to have an external microphone which you can plug directly into the camera, right? You cannot do that with the EM10 Mark IV. I talk about that in my video. And number two, depends on what kind of video you do. If you are a vlogger, you need to see yourself. You need to talk to the camera, like now I'm doing a talking head video. You need to flip the screen around, right? Uh, the EM10 Mark IV still has a tilt screen, if I'm not wrong, right? EM10 Mark IV is a tilt screen. Man, my memory is rusty because I haven't seen that camera in years. Is it tilt screen? Yes, EM10 Mark IV is still using a tilt screen. So that is a disadvantage. If you want to do serious in video, swivel screen is the way to go and you definitely need a microphone input. But for stills, no problem. So for more detailed explanation, please, please, please look at those video links. Sorry, I cannot pronounce your name. Hi, Robin. Best wishes from Ukraine. Very nice to see you here. Welcome to the stream. James says, thank you. No worries. Chris says, I think OM can still be relevant and influential by leaning back into the computational sites. Stack Raw is a great example. They should focus on changes they could implement on all OM cameras. The problem with computational is that you need resources and they don't have resources. It's R&D, it's just R&D, right? And Canon, Nikon, Sony, they are pouring all the resources into R&D. And their competition of photography style things are also getting more advanced. Of course, nothing original from them yet. What we see is everything is copied from Micro Four Thirds, right? Like handheld high res shot. No, they don't have handheld high res shot yet. They have high res shot. They have live composite. They have uh, five six image stabilization. Five six image stabilization is technically computational. You need to calculate the movement for that minute second, right? Uh, focus stacking, they have uh, the AI human face detection, which is already surpassing what OM Digital Solutions can do. Like Sony is way ahead in terms of human face and eye tracking or AI. And there is the bird animal detection. Everyone is doing really, really, really well. So what OM Digital Solutions need to do is to come up with something new that other people don't have, like the live grab ND, for example. That is a good implementation, but that alone is not enough. You need something a little bit more wow. You get what I mean? Something more revolutionary, something bigger, something that will really make a huge change or will impact the, our photography or the results that we get, right? Hmm. Bogan says, how is the EMR Mark II versus EMR Mark III? I think both are very similar cameras, but the EMR Mark III, the human eye detection is better. Uh, EMR Mark III, 
what else has life ND, has handheld high-res shot, which the EMR Mark II does not have. Mm. Hui says, I agree with you, I also prefer the EMR Mark II to G9. Don't know why, as I prefer, generally prefer Panasonic cameras. Yes, I feel that the EMR Mark II is one camera that Olympus got right. Like really a lot of things they got right on this camera. And that camera received like tons of firmware upgrades to make it even better. Nelson's photo tip says, Hey Robin, greetings from Cincinnati in the US. Sorry, I can't if I pronounced that wrong. It's not a place that I'm familiar with. I made some really nice eclipse photos with the EMR Mark III with the 100 to 400 Olympus lens with the two times teleconverter. Congratulations. I'm sure those photos are splendid. Dude Nude says, current owner of the EPL 10, thank you for starting my photography and videography journey. Your channel is great. Thank you so much for letting me know. I appreciate the kind words and thank you so much for being here. Mike Cruz says, oh, you guys are talking to each other, no worries. Welcome to the chat, Mike. Very nice to see you here. <laughs> Edwin says, comparing G9 Mark II versus EM OM1 Mark II, G9 Mark II seems heavier for me. I'm looking on autofocus stabilization and portability. I'm planning to use it for overseas trip for both photo and video. Appreciate your advice. No worries. I share as much as I can. And I've, obviously, I can't give you any advice on the G9 Mark II versus EM1 OM1 Mark II because I have neither of these cameras. <laughs> Hernan says, hey, G9 have 422 10 bits, but ProRes through HDMI better image than... That is not true. EM1 Mark II's image stabilization is better than the G9. I have tested this before. Yeah. For me, Olympus are beasts. What is beasts? Yeah. But then again, the Panasonic depends on how you want to shoot with Panasonic. The Panasonic's high video capabilities, the bit rate, whatever, the ProRes, 41010, whatever, 10 bit, it sort of became useless when autofocus fails. You get what I mean? I've tried the G9 for vlogging. I was holding the camera as I walk around. You have no idea how much the autofocus misses my face, or there was just pulsing. The pulsing is just so annoying, which something doesn't happen with it to say EM5 uh, Mark III or EM1 Mark II, right? We have a super chat. Yeah, it's a super chat from Hernan. For your kindness with everyone's chats, just a few YouTubers give us attention. Please take a fresh chai tea. Thank you so much, Hernan. I appreciate that. You are too kind. And uh, yeah, all these super chats are deeply, deeply appreciated because you guys will help to, to fund me, add on to my funds to make more videos. Yes, guys, v making videos do cost some money. They are not free. And of course, uh, it will improve my production quality as well. It encourage me to make more content. Javi Photo says, the key is in the optics always and Olympus is second to none. Plus it has the best sensor cleaning and top top tech features for superb performance. Pros outweighs the cons by far like no other system. Yep, I agree. The tech was ahead at one time. They were the pioneer. They were at the forefront. Uh, they were leading everyone. They show everyone how to make a pro mirrorless camera. Yeah, I don't know what happened to them these days. I wish that uh, OMD Solutions and Panasonic, they really have to get serious. They have to pull all their resources and really push ahead because I think Micro Four Thirds has a place in the future and can bring in the big money. It just depends on how they want to play the cards, right? And I think it's also a good time for OM Digital Solutions to sit down with Panasonic, work together side by side more closely and push a really wild camera to fight with everyone else out there. Hernan says, are big brothers, but for a start point, much G9 is good and now drop price, yeah. Your vitamin says, I am in, wow, in South Korea. I'm a Myanmar citizen near Thailand. I have your, I've been on your channel following since 2020. I chose Olympus because of you. I still use EM5 Mark III. I love what you do. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your support and I appreciate that you are here in the live stream. Thank you so much. I'll drink to that. <laughs> hmm. I reply to a few more comments and then I'll continue on <clears throat> to the part two of the chat. Jim says, do you have Mati Sulanto lock in your basement? <laughs> it seems like I do. Hey, maybe I do. But shh, don't tell anyone. Linda says, around here, the EM1 is cheaper than EM5 Mark II use. So maybe Brian doesn't need to stretch his budget. Yes. EM1 is older, so naturally it is cheaper. Azrin says, may I know what's the latest 2024 Micro Four Thirds cameras? Uh, the current models, not necessarily released this year, but the current models are Panasonic G9 Mark II, uh, OM System OM1 Mark II, 
I think these are the two current models at the moment. The, the best models that you can find. Sorry, I cannot pronounce your name. Olympus Pen EPL 10, 14, 150 set. Inexpensive, easy and high quality option for personal travel. Yes. Very small as well, right? Anime says, Yongno 25 f 7 or 20, Lumix 25 f 7 which lens should be better for EM5 original. Olympus 25 f 8 I'll tell you why. So, I don't have the Yongno here with me, but for whatever reasons, the Yongno 25 f 7 is huge. I don't know why. Like, if you've seen, where is my Olympus 25 f Here is the 25 f 8 So you see how tiny this is, this Olympus 25 f 8 It's really, 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 really small, right? In the used market, the Olympus lens and the Panasonic lens are about the same price. I don't think you can find a used Yongno. And the Yongno price, if you compare to the used price of the Lumix and the Olympus, it's about the same. So that rule out the Yongno because it's just too big. And the autofocus is not as good as Panasonic and uh, Olympus. And why get the Olympus over the Panasonic? One reason. The Panasonic camera suffers focus, breathe, focus shift. Focus shift. So if you shoot at wide open all the time, it's fine. If you shoot at f1.7, if you stop down to f2.8, the focus will be either back or front focus. It is a persistent problem. If you just look at the web, just type Panasonic 25 f1.7 focus shift, you'll come up with like hundreds and hundreds of results of everyone complaining about that problem, right? Chris says, do you use DSO Photo Lab? No, I use Capture One Pro. Azrin says, Selamat Hari Raya too. Yay, Selamat Hari Raya, I do Fitri to you. I hope you've had enough ketupats, rendangs, lemangs. Ah, good food, hey. Number six says, okay, I'm here now, so happy feasting. No worries. Brian says, thanks, Linda. Okay, no worries. You guys talk to each other. Hmm. The live caption says happy fisting. <laughs> yeah, the caption it can be quite tricky sometimes. Durian says, live composite mode changed my perspective of micro four thirds. So easy, so practical. Reminds me of uh, storm chasing on analog days. No worries with long exposures. Yeah, you can just leave it on as long as you want and it will not uh, over be overexposed, right? It's so convenient. And stop at any time. Dorena says, is the Nikon 1 G1 or the other 1 S2 is better? I have not dedicated enough time on the one system to tell you the difference. I have the Nikon One J1 and I'm quite happy with it, but I don't know what's the difference between the J1 and the S1. You can find this information easily on the internet. I, I just don't feel like I want to invest my time on something that is already dead. You get what I mean? The system has been abandoned or has been killed off by Nikon. So I bought the Nikon One J1 out of curiosity. I just want to explore the one system and try to understand why they died. And that's the end of the story, right? Hernan says, and in this private session chat, how is the interactions? Photos, ideas, share. Can you check, open it, like send a photo, for example? No, it's exactly the same chat like here, this live stream, just a different format. Maybe in the future, I'll explore different options. For now, it was just live stream. It's just that we get to talk a lot more. They get to ask me more questions and I can answer you more directly rather than going through so many people in the chat, right? Yeah, let me just make sure I don't miss anyone. Linda says you're talking to each other, no worries. Samuel says, yes, thanks to your videos, I bought the Iman X, best of focus, not the OM1 with grip. All right, I'm gonna pause here for a bit. I'll get back to the chat, don't worry, because I wanna continue on to the second part of my discussion, why get Micro Four Thirds. So earlier on, I shared the reasons about uh, why get Micro Four Thirds as a professional photographer, right? Smaller, lighter, you don't have to break your back, it's efficient, yet you deliver sufficient uh, performance or image quality, you can get fantastic results. Now, if you are a hobbyist, if you're not a professional photographer, you're not shooting for a client, you're not a paid photographer, so you just want to have fun, right? You're an enthusiast. Micro Four Thirds is still relevant. I use Micro Four Thirds when I want to do something serious. I use Micro Four Thirds when I'm out doing some personal projects. So the cameras that I normally use would be Depends on the situation. The GM1, this is the GM1, all right? Look at how tiny it is. Like, tell me, you can find a full frame camera this small and you still can change lens. This is a GM1, all right? Amazing, amazing camera. I also sometimes use the, if I want to have more grip and then uh, image stabilization, uh, tilt screen, then of course, the more sensible choice will be this Olympus. EPL7, which I think is a fantastic, fantastic camera. I still use this from time to time for more serious stuff, right? Now, 
These cameras are so tiny. Let me just find a lens to attach to show you how small it is. Let's say that I want to keep my combination as, as minimal as I can, right? Uh, here it is. Let me just rip this over. Okay. Put this down here so I don't drop it accidentally. Now, this is the GM1 with a body cap lens by Seven Artisans. Look at how compact this is. You can argue all you want about equivalence, but there's nothing equivalent to this in terms of size and weight. And when out there doing my shutter therapy sessions, when out there doing street photography, I'm walking quite a distance. I can clock 25,000, 30,000 steps in a day. Maybe not all from that singular walk, but I can walk like 10 kilometers. I don't know, that's like seven miles. I don't know how many miles. Anyway, I don't want to convert now. My brain is not working that well. So the point is, I want something smaller, lighter. It doesn't weigh me down. It's not a burden. And it has to be something so small and so light and so easy to use, right? It has to be like an extension from your arm. So micro four thirds make sense. And I can still change lens. Let's say that, oh, I don't, don't want to be stuck at uh, 15 millimeters perspective. I can change to something wider. Say, if you are a 28 millimeters person, then you can change to the amazing Panasonic 14 f2.5 lens. Or if you want if something even wider, then there is this Panasonic Lumix G9 f1.7, sorry, Lumix 9 millimeters f1.7, which is still very, very, very small. You get what I mean? So I still feel that there is a place for micro four thirds and I don't understand why OMG Solutions and Panasonic, they are not fighting in this segment. Look at what Ricoh is doing with the GR3 and GR3X. Look at what Fuji is doing with the, the X100 Mark VI. Yes, Panasonic had the LX100 series before, Mark I and Mark II, but they stopped. They never improved. And these cameras were plagued with a lot of issues. The lens was not the best. It doesn't have a powerful image stabilization. Yes, the lens has IS, but uh, it's almost like there's no IS. The viewfinder is terrible. There's no tilt screen. The video has heavy 4K. There's like, there's just so many problems playing these cameras. Like if they put in high quality electronic viewfinder, they put in really powerful image stabilization, give it a tilt screen, give it a good lens. I think the cameras will fly the LS100, make it an LS100 Mark III, or better give us a G9 Mark whatever, Mark III and, or G, GM, sorry, not G9, so just GM1, right? What did I say earlier? I hope I didn't name this wrong. <laughs> It's too late, guys. It's very late in Malaysia. Now it's like 30 minutes past 11 or 30 minutes to midnight. And my brain is starting to add up. So anyway, GM1, give us a new GM5 or GM5 Mark II or GM1 Mark II and put in some really cool tech in it. Put in the AI human face detection, right? That will be really cool. And yeah, I think this camera has a place. Fuji proved it. This, this sold like what? The pre-order is 1 million in just a few days, that's insane. And I think the numbers are, con are going to continue to climb, right? So there is definitely a clear market, a huge chunk of pie for OM Digital Solutions and Panasonic to bite into. And it's not like they don't have all these ingredients. Fire assist image stabilization, they have it. Electronic viewfinder, just get from someone else, right? And the electronic viewfinder in the current cameras are quite good. Tilt screen, they started with the tilt screen and you know, all this te tech, they already have it. All you need to do is just put it together in a small body. If you want to make the body nice, well, bring out the Pan F Mark II. Pan F, no one complain about the design. It is beautiful, right? Make it weather sealed. That will definitely, definitely fly. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, coffee, coffee, coffee. Hmm. All right, I hope you guys, I don't know if you agree with my arguments about why Get Micro Four Thirds. I still think it's relevant now in 2024. I love using it. I enjoy shooting with it, both for my professional shoot. I get my shots to my clients. I get paid. And of course, for personal projects, I love shooting it on the streets. No problem whatsoever, right? And also like when you point something as small as this on a stranger and asking the permission to take photographs, it's a lot less intimidating than say compared, let's say I bring a huge black box on a huge lens like this, right? This EM1 Mark II. So a smaller camera has its place in street photography as well. I, mean, I do a lot of street portraits. That aside, it is Hari Raya. Again, those of you who have just joined the stream, Salamat Hari Raya Adifitri to you. Mubarak. <laughs> I hope you have had a joyous celebration. And 
because yesterday was the first day of Hari Raya and I don't want to miss out on the action, right? So me and a group of friends, we went out to Kampung Baru. So Kampung Baru is one of my usual street hunting grounds. Uh, it is just next to the city center, next to all the tall, tall buildings, the metropolitan area. It's very close to the KLCC Twin Towers. I think if you look at Kuala Lumpur, you definitely think of the Twin Towers as a landmark, right? And it's just within a walking distance to the Twin Towers. So it's a, quite a majestic place because it's a Malay village, uh, which is situated right in the middle of the city next to the Twin Tower. So me and my friends, we went there in the afternoon uh, just before sunset to walk around just to experience the festive mood, uh, just to see how the locals they celebrate and just wish some people walking by a Salamat Hari Raya, you know, we just want to get into the fun, right? So of course I brought my camera with me. So I brought <coughs> the original EM1, the Olympus EM1 and the 25 F1.8, just this, just this one combination, the EM1 and a 25 f1.8, one camera, one lens for this one particular session, right? And I'm gonna share the photographs with you now. So I have two series. The first set uh, is about 10 photographs. It's curated down. So I encourage people to shoot photographs to fit into a mini project. So try to take photographs from a storytelling perspective. And then when you edit down the photographs, I'm not talking about post-processing. I'm talking about curating. I'm talking about cutting out photographs that do not fit the narrative. Find the photographs that will tell a story. So they must be like, you have to establish the location, you have to tell the situation there, then you zoom into the detail, then you get into the story that you want to tell. And then of course, there's something funny and then there's a conclusion. So you have to arrange a series of photographs. This is what we call a mini project to tell a story, storytelling through photographs. Rather than take random photographs that they all have no connection to whatsoever, like one photograph is great, another is great, but when we put them together, they do not communicate with each other. You get what I mean? So I encourage people to shoot in a series, right? So this first series is Kampung Baru on Hari Raya. So the opening shot is to tell you of the weather, it was overcast, okay? Uh, it wasn't about to rain, it was just overcast, it was very cloudy, the sunlight was very soft, which sort of actually worked yesterday. It gave a very interesting mood or atmosphere to the entire place. And of course, because it's cloudy, it made it a little bit more comfortable for us to walk around because it has been really, 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 really hot in Malaysia. <laughs> Right, so this is the typical scene in Kampung Baru. You have the traditional wooden house, okay? Uh, these houses have been there for a long time, right? And then just next to it, very, very near, we already have those amazing skyscrapers. It's a concrete jungle, it's the metropolitan area. So this Malay village is just smack right in the middle of the city, which is very, very interesting to watch. And it's a residential area. So we also have to be a bit more conscious because Compared to the typical street photography where it's a public space, this is actually residential areas. We're encroaching into private properties. But we are always very courteous. People there are very friendly. We have never run into trouble. We just have to be mindful that this is not the normal public streets. This is just a residential area, right? So we encountered the first batch of our family taking a group photograph after a large gathering. I think this is quite a, a majestic sight. As you can see, the Twin Towers at the back, by the size of the Twin Towers, you can see how near those buildings are. By my estimation, it's less than one kilometers away, maybe just half a kilometer. You can walk to Kelsisi from here in maybe less than 10 minutes, right? On foot, no joke, there's a bridge that takes you there. So yeah, I really like to compose things like this. I can have a lot of things in my frame. Uh, you have the humans taking group photographs, some action, not just humans, but actions at the bottom of the frame. And then you have the layer of the buildings and it's very prominent background, the twin towers at the back, right? This kind of photos that I really like to take. So I went closer to them. Of course, uh, they, they allowed me to take the group photograph. They asked one of my friends to take photos of everyone because obviously, and whenever you take group photographs, if you don't have a tripod, someone is going to miss out. So my friend volunteered to take the photographs and I took a close up of them from, from the side, right? <laughs> and the cool thing about Hari Raya is because in case you guys don't know what Hari Raya is, it's the celebration, huge celebration after one month of fasting. And 
in Malaysia, Hari Raya is the largest festive celebration. It is a huge deal. So for Muslims, for those celebrating, they'll dress their best for the day, usually in traditional Malay, or this is the Baju Melayu, Malay uh, Baju, <laughs> Baju is cloth, right? So they are all in the traditional costumes. They are looking their best. They are presenting themselves the best on this day. Everyone looks so good in, together in the photographs. It's just amazing. Right, so of course, I can't help but take some close-up portraits and I can't just go zoom right into the face as my normal portrait of strangers, just hand and shoulder shots because I do want to see the costume that they're wearing as well. And it has become like a trend for the family members to wear matching colors or matching costumes. Like this, oh, obviously they're wearing the same shirts, right? I think they're brothers or at least cousins, I did not ask. And then there's this uh, lady coming out from the house, zooming out using the moto motorcycle, which is really cool. I thought that she's riding it alone and she's all dressed up. And you can only see this happen either on Hari Raya or let's say they're going to a wedding nearby, right? <laughs> which is pretty cool. But mostly on Hari Raya. And I, I took this opportunity to do some um, panning shots. And obviously these two, two persons, they're riding on it and they're also dressed up uh, in the festive costumes, which is really cool. I did some panning shots with the old EM1. It still works, by the way. And by the way, if you guys don't know, uh, motorcycle or motorbike is one of the main forms of transport in Malaysia, right? You see them a lot on the streets, the bigger streets, bigger roads or smaller streets. I find another group taking group photograph, uh, which is really cool, right? And you can see that the tone of the skin or everything is very soft, very flat. It's very flattering for portraits. It's actually the best time to take portraits with this kind of tone because of the cloudy weather. Of course, I went in a lot closer <laughs> and this time I took the photo for myself. <laughs> they asked where the photos will come out. Of course, I told them it will come out on YouTube. And yeah, a lot of uh, happy faces. This is probably one of the happiest because, you know, it's a huge celebration for everyone and they've been fasting for one month. They, have, they don't eat any food or water for, for morning, from sun, sunrise until sunset, right? And sunset here is quite late. It's about 7.30. Yeah, so this is the final shot, just to cap everything off. This is Malaysian flag, just to show you that, uh, yeah, this is a very Malaysian thing. Hari Raya, Hari Raya is a Muslim celebration. It's celebrated by Muslims all over in the world. But I think in Malaysia, we do it with our own style. There is a certain signature to it. You look at it, you know that it is Malay, you know that it is Malaysia. And yeah, so I'm very proud to be a Malaysian. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the series of photographs. I know it's short. Uh, it was a short walk. It was a casual walk. I wasn't intending to do anything too serious. And mind you, it is the first day of celebration. So we're not doing anything crazy on these people, right? We just want to stroll around before dinner, just look at everyone being so happy and absorb the happy energy, you know, and just grab some quick shots, right? That's what it is. Gonna drink some coffee. Hey. All right, coming back to the comments. Durian says, your caption display your speech even before you start talking. What kind of sorcery is this? <laughs> because uh, YouTube live streams, there is a delay. So the subtitles, they, how, how do they do this? The captions were done before the delay. You get what I mean? So while I'm speaking, the, 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 the captions are already interpreting my words and then as the delay comes so there will be some sort of like a syncing process so there's a possibility that the delay is longer than the subtitle roger says just got here hey roger how are you one of your the other bloggers had a talk on six small travel cameras OM systems need to go back to introducing small cameras since they are up to date on the high-end ones yes i think it's time they go back and i think one of the representatives of the of the om digital solutions just came out and said they will continue to make pan cameras right soon february says hello sir when i want to shoot a photo my camera always changes color when changing the shot position do you know what the problem is by the way my camera is olympus em5 mark ii I think in some situations where there is mixed lighting, 
So there are different sources of light. The camera's auto white balance engine will interpret the white balance and try to neutralize the colors as best as possible. If the light is constant, the colors will not change. So this only happens when there are different sources of light. In that situation, if you don't want the changing colors, actually I deal with colors in post-processing. I don't even care what colors the camera is capturing while I was shooting because there's one less thing to think about. But if you want to take care of the color in camera, then you have to dial in the custom white balance. Do not use auto white balance, right? Brand says, my older brother lives in Germany. We'll ask him to check for me. Thanks, Linda. You guys are talking to each other. No worries. Samuel says, yo, show the aperture. You can use depth of field preview. I have it in one front FN button. Show aperture. For what? If you're talking about the question that someone asked earlier, uh, why when he, when he changed the settings, let's say he stopped down the aperture, he cannot see it. That's because that's not how live simulation works, right? But once you take a photograph, the camera, the lens will have no choice but to stop down to take the photograph. The live simulation does not have the aperture unless you force the depth of field preview on at full time, which is also an option if you want to, right? Brian says, hey, hey, Brian, how are you? Nice to see you here. Brian, the microphone third guy. Brian says, greetings from Cumbria, UK, my friend. Just looking and listening. A reminder to all to buy Robin a coffee and press the like button. Great stream. Thank you so much, Brian. Appreciate that. And you guys, please check Brian's channel as well. He also makes some really cool Micro Four Thirds content. And Brian, sorry for missing out on your live stream. Hey, I just saw it like you had a live stream last week. I didn't even know that you went live. It would be nice to, to catch you live. Eyes wide open says, Robin, you skipped my question, but I still love you. Did I? Let me see what did I skip. I don't think I skipped anything. Eyes wide open, right? Let me just scroll back. I want to make sure. I did not skip your question. Nope. I did not skip your question, eyes wide open. I answer every single one. Unless the question never appeared on my chat, which is also a possibility. Guys. I do my best to answer everything, okay? So please. <laughs> so Ice Open says, Robin, you see my question, still love you. Just wondering if you ever do a stream regarding street photography. Your approach tip uh, bad memorable encounters. Do people ask a copy of your photographs? Uh, yeah, I think that's a good suggestion. I can talk about it. It's just that uh, I will try to time my sort of like the, the photography that I do or this live streams topic to coincide with what I do on the Monday video. Like, like for example, this week we're talk talking about why get Micro Four Thirds. So Monday's video is referring to the wow camera from Micro Four Thirds from years ago, right? So there's like a connection. So I need to find that connection. Yeah, I can make it happen. Thanks for the suggestion, eyes wide open. Richard says, hi from Pennsylvania, US, your English is way better than my Malay, no worries. <laughs> you are not a Malay, so yeah, of course. Hui says, I'm Welsh with English as a second language while living in the west of the UK. Your English is certainly more neutral than mine, which has a heavy though not extreme Welsh accent. Ah, no worries. I think accents are beautiful, guys. Like, it tells you... Your identity, right? Like, I, I don't understand that some people complain like, oh, your accent is too thick. Like, it's so hard to, I mean, like, come on, get over it, right? We should celebrate diversity. And for us to speak English as not our main language, right? For us to come in and still learn and speak English, I think it's a beautiful thing. And for all of us to come together here in this uh, live stream and be able to communicate, that itself is beautiful. So yeah, no worries. Angelo Play for One, hey, very nice to see you Angelo how are you hello Robin greetings from the Netherlands happy to be watching your videos live after weeks no worries and welcome back very nice to see you here Alucard says hi from Barcelona Spain hey Alucard how are you nice to see you meet by products says I love my micro four thirds but I find I'm always grabbing my food from Nikon Sigma or Panasonic to use vintage glass on oh yes if you want to attach manual vintage lenses of course full frame lenses uh, full frame cameras make more sense because you can get the entire focal length right, rather than the two times crop I understand where you're coming from Linda says Panasonic should upgrade the electronic viewfinder of the GS series they should update the GS series right they don't even have the GS series anymore <laughs> 
Luca says, Ema Mark II is better of a Lumix, not for a video, but G9 Mark II. Of course, if you want the, the best of the best, if you have the money to spend, get either the G9 Mark II or the OM1 Mark II, right? Yeah, you can't get wrong with any of the EMA Mark II is like what? Seven years old now? It was launched in 2016. Eight years old now. It's eight years old, EMA Mark II. So I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. C Line says the most impactful thing OM system could do in the current Fuji hype market is probably partner with Kodak to perfect a true Kodak Chrome film simulation exclusive to their cameras. But then I think Kodak is dead. Right? So whatever Kodak is alive now, whatever they're doing, they're not from the original Kodak anymore. And I think all the original employees have probably left or found something better to do with their lives rather than staying with a dead company, right? Yeah. Bagots, sorry if I get your name wrong, Bagots. Bagots says, Lumix G9 versus EMR Mark II, what's the best? It depends. I prefer the EMR Mark II. Some people prefer the G9, right? And my reasons for going for the EMR Mark II is because it has better image quality as proven by DxO Mark, if you believe the site. It has better image stabilization and it has better video autofocus, the face detection autofocus. Like I'm a one-man crew. I cannot use manual focus. I set up the camera on a tripod, I flip the screen over, I hit the record button. I expect the camera to follow me and track my face and get me at least be reliable, right? But the G9, G9, the original, will fail. I've tried it. There's a lot of pulsing. It sometimes misses my face altogether. It happened too often and it's very frustrating. That doesn't happen with the EMR Mark II. That's why EMR Mark II is one of my vlogging cameras, although I use the EM5 Mark III a lot more. But now my EM5 Mark III is with a friend, so I have, I'm back to using the EMR Mark II as my uh, camera, main camera for this YouTube channel, right? So yeah, if G9 implemented face detection autofocus, Face, not human face, but P-H-A-S-E, face detect from, from early on, I think it would have beaten the EMR Mark II, right? A lot of people would have gravitated towards G9, but, but it did not. And the continuous autofocus, even for steels, both steels and video, is problematic. It's not as reliable as EMR Mark II. But of course, there is G, G9 Mark II now. So all these complaints that I, have, I think is invalid. So guys... I'm just telling the truth. But hey, if you want the G9 Mark II, go for it. I think that you'll be really happy with it. Hmm. Anthony says, it seems like the majority of people who have tried out both micro four thirds find a Panasonic menu user friendly. I don't. <laughs> and I have a lot of friends who also find Panasonic menu not user friendly. I'm not saying that Olympus is user friendly. I'm not. I, I acknowledge the issues with Olympus menu, but Panasonic's menu is... Uh, a good example of uh, menu, uh, good menu implementation is Canon. Sony's menu is terrible. Fuji is terrible. Nikon, oh. Canon, however, is not bad. Shopper Frost says, Hi Robin, what do you think of film photography and Pentax about to release a new film camera? No digital, no go. I don't do film photography. I've shared in the past about my bad experience with film photographers not photography, photographers, and I'm traumatized and scarred for life, and I'll never touch film ever again in my life. Rob, hey Rob, how are you? Rob says, hi Robin, always great to see your smile. Oh, thank you so much. And Rob, always great to hear your soothing voice. <laughs> when you do live, of course, I'm glad that you're coming back every week now doing live streams. I'm so happy. It's like, my the end of my week because when you do live streams on sunday sunday is night for me here in malaysia right it's so it's the perfect end for my week it's like if you don't go live every sunday rob track it's not it's not complete for me my week is not complete right yeah so rob says just a reminder to everyone to hit the like button oh rob you're too kind thank you so much for being here i appreciate you dy says life life composite and life andy is Highly underrated, yeah. I think they are useful in situations where you need them. But then again, I also have to admit that for my kind of photography, I do street photography, portraits, I do product photography, I do events. I don't need live composite and live Andy, but if you shoot landscape, if you do like night sky, I think this can be really, really useful. Lucas says, Viewtrox 18 F0.95. I don't think that's in the roadmap. Viewtrox does not have that lens, right? Yeah. Anthony says the Sigma Super for Sony is 150 to 600. 1800 Canadian cheaper than the new Super Soap from OM Systems. Yeah, the pricing is really, really questionable. We have a new member, John. Hey, John, what are you doing? You buy me so much coffee already. <laughs> 
But thank you so much, John, for joining the membership. I appreciate it. Uh, guys, if you don't know that I, I actually have an able membership on this channel in case you've just joined this, this uh, channel. So I just want to quickly talk about the membership perks. Just with the price of a cup of coffee, you can have three perks, right? You can have early access to my new videos. You see my new videos 24 hours before everyone else. We will have a private members only live, live streams, uh, which will happen once a month. So you can see here, we have like 150 people live concurrently. I have to go through a lot of comments. I might miss your comments, Brit on so many comments, right? So in the members only live stream, you can chat with me more. I can interact with you better. It's more efficient that way. You don't have to fight with everyone else. And I will prioritize reply to your comments. If you comment in any of my videos, I can filter it out, not out. I can filter by your comments and I can get to your comments first before everyone else, right? So yeah, do consider joining the membership. And John, thank you so much for joining the membership. I appreciate that. Hey, John, we should catch up. If we can't do a follow up, maybe lunch or a coffee soon, John. Yep. RS says, how to handle or fight gas, gear acquisition syndrome. I think it's important to recognize that uh, what you have is good enough. You have to recognize that whatever that you have in your hands is the best that you can, it's, it's good enough to, to get the job done, right? And if it's not, then you have to do something about it. Uh, you have to be happy with your gear to, to, to be able to happy with the process of your photography to get the good shots. And trust me, it depends on what camera that you have. Anything you buy from say five years, eight years ago, it's definitely more than good enough to get a job done. And Having said that, it's also good to explore sometimes a little bit. Just don't go overboard. So it's all a matter of discipline and control. Like for, for my case, uh, I'm not going to lie. I experiment with all kinds of different cameras and systems. I just recently bought the Nikon Z5 with some lenses. I think it's public knowledge, right? But I'm very focused and I'm very, very, very uh, strict on my primary system, Micro Four Thirds, for my jobs, for my serious personal projects, Micro Four Thirds, Olympus, Panasonic, pa uh, OM system, right? That's my, my main system. But I also allow myself to explore without much consequences. Let's say I find a Canon 5D, which is like, I don't know, 150 US dollars. If I like it, I keep it. If I don't like it, I can sell it off. And these old EF lenses are cheap. I found a Nikon D50 for like, $15 or 20 US dollars. That's cheap, right? Uh, if I like it, I keep it. If I don't like it, it became a paperweight or I can give it to other people or I sell it off. If, and I bought the Nikon Z5, which costs about one fifth or 20% of the OM1 Mark II, 20%. I'm still playing with it. I'm still exploring it. There are things that I like about it. There are things that I don't like about it. It's not perfect. But if I like it, I will keep it. If I don't like it, I'll sell it off or you know, give it to a friend that deserves it or who's starting out on photography, right? So yeah, uh, I guess that's the way to look at it. You have, you have to center yourself. You have your own main system. Stick with it, be happy with it, learn the best out of it, uh, work around the weaknesses, optimize the strengths. Then it can be your main system, right? Then you won't stray too far away. But be, be open-minded. Like it's, it's, it's a good thing to try different things, right? It's like you don't want to be stuck with just one or two flavors of ice cream for the rest of your life. Let's say that I love chocolate, but sometimes I want to try strawberry and vanilla, right? Romeril says, I recently bought an EPL 10 to use for street photography. Like it, but would love a new pan or fixed lens camera. Yes, I know, right? We definitely need more of these cameras these days. Wikish says, sadly, LS100 and LS100 Mark II are discontinued. Always looking forward for LS200 with non-zoom lens, small and light SGR, and simple dials SX100. I know, right? See, there is clearly a demand, a market for it. Yeah. Samuel says GX9 with 17 f1.8 or 25 f1.8. For video, I prefer GX80, less megapixels, less noise, less crop. And it's another reason for micro four thirds. I can use the same lens for video photos and personal use. Yeah, that's true. It's versatile, right? You can use it for almost anything. Bob says, I shoot Sony APS-C with 10, 18, 16, 70, and 70, 70, 350, but now need blackout free shooting. If I switch to OM1 Mark II, I can't see where any lens weight advantages would come from. You can't see lens weight advantages? You can't see any weight advantages? It's like 115 grams? Let me see. Olympus 45 f1.8 weight.
116 grams. No weight advantage. Let's see. This is also 100 and something grams, 130 something grams. This is the G. Uh, why do I keep saying G? <laughs> this is the Panasonic 9 F1.7. Then what else do we have? This is also like 100 grams plus. This is 17 F1.8. All right. And then this is also, I don't know. All oh, these are small lenses. Like, what are you talking about? No weight advantage. <laughs> I don't think Sony has any of these lenses. Samuel says, I have had the DRS100, but have a problem with dust in sensor and can't clean it easily. Yeah, that is also a uh, GR3 problem, right? Oh, we have, let's see, Bastian is here. Hey, Bastian. Oh, Bastian sent a super chat. I did not see that. Sorry. Bastian says, hey, Robin, I'm late, but hi from sunny Germany. Hey, Bastian. Very nice to see you here. Always very happy to see you and welcome to the stream. And don't worry, don't have to apologize for being late. John says, would you recommend for me to downsize? John, I think you know what you want already. La. You, won't, you won't listen to my recommendation. La. <laughs> and anyway, like, like I said, it's important to be happy with what you have, be confident with what you have, and you already have some really amazing kit to work with. I think your Sony system works very well for a wedding photography that you do, right? I'm not here to advise you or anyone else. Otherwise, I'm only here to make a case for myself. Why get Micro Four Thirds? this year so if you are starting out as a fresh photographer or if you're looking to jump into micro four thirds as a hobbyist it's definitely a strong uh a strong contender or strong consideration but if you are a working photographer somehow you find that your cameras and lenses are being too big being too heavy it weighs you down and somehow you don't need those like super bokeh let's, let's face it micro four thirds cannot get all this nice blur background right and you need it in your weddings i i know like i don't need it for my jobs that i do so if you don't need that then i think micro four thirds is a, a good place to 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 look into especially if you can downsize so much right? look at how tiny my 85 equivalent lens is. This is 45 f1.8. And this is the main lens that I use for all my YouTube videos, my talking head shots, right? Okay, we have another member who has just joined. Eyes wide open, thank you so much. Thanks for joining. Eyes wide open says, welcome to Photo Wall Buddies. Thank you so much. Yeah. Samuel says, you have depth of view preview for preview the depth of view and you can see the aperture and diaphragm close if you use the live view depth of, the, uh, depth of view preview. So if you are saying that you're asking me to do the depth of view preview on my EMR Mark II, that's not going to happen. You know why? I've disabled all of the... You're saying that this, this front button here is depth of view preview button, right? It is not. I remap it for something else. So in order for me to have depth of view preview, I have to dive into the menu, I have to go to button controls, I have to reassign. That's going to waste too much time. <laughs> because let's face it, for the photography that I do, I have to run, everything is fast. I don't even have time to preview anything, right? Just grab the shot. And if I want wide open, I want all blur. Why do I have to preview the blur, right? Unless you have the time to set up the tripod, put the thing in front of you slowly, you could preview. I mean, come on. I'll just take two, three shots and see which one I like and just stick with it, right? Yeah. Simon says, I said that to show the diaphragm close to show it like you try. I can't. Like I said, I need to dive into the menu because I've already completely disabled the function. It doesn't, it's, it's not useful for me, right? Robin says, the WoW camera EM5 you did the video on is still one of my favorite cameras to use. Lighter than the EM1 Mark II and smaller than the EM1 Mark II cameras I have. Yeah, the EM5 is an amazing, amazing camera. I still use it from time to time. Yep. All right. Tan says, hi Robin, greetings from Vietnam. Hey Tan, how are you? I've got a Lumix GS85 and some budget lenses. Currently, I need other lenses for my portrait photography needs, but my budget is limited. Can you give me some suggestion? You say you need another lens. What lens do you have? What are the budget lenses you have? If you don't have this already, the 45 f1.8 or the Lumix 42.5 f1.7, these are good lenses for portrait. They are small, they are light, uh, they are long, so you can get some background compression, yet you have f1.8, f1.7 bright aperture to create some blur background. I think these are excellent portrait lenses and you can find them very cheap in the used market as well. Okay. Fotito says, man, I hope OM competes with Ricoh GR and uh, Fuji X100 with Pan. Yeah, we need the Pan F Mark II now. Anime says, is there any camera area or shopping mall that you always trust at KL? I normally go to YL camera 
or sometimes I go to N4 RT shutter. Normally N4 I will just buy online, but they have a physical shop in Malaysia now. N4 is uh, based in uh, P in Penang actually, but they have a shop in PJ now. So sometimes I go there, but I usually just go to uh, YL camera. Yeah. Asmida, hey Asmida, how are you? Yesterday I tried the EM5 Mark III with 2 to 100 for ice hockey match instead of Pentax K3. It was unusable but also misfocused some shots. Autofocus single point, do you think that autofocus limiter helped? So I don't know how you focus, I don't know uh, the way you shoot with the camera, your handling, your technique, uh, but if you have understand the behavior, I don't think you will miss a lot. And I haven't used 12-100, but it's one of the newer lenses. I've used lenses older than that. Uh, for example, 40 to 150 f2.8, all the focus was flawless. I was shooting a tennis match, or maybe the tennis was not as fast as hockey. I don't know. <laughs> Antonio says, uh, Antonio from Portugal, a bit late, but let's do this. Yes, let's do this. Ice White Open says, just wanted to say thanks for continuing producing, teaching, and providing us with great content. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Lin says, how do you feel about the Fuji XF10? I had an XF10. Uh, let me just pull out my video. I have a review before. Guys, a lot of the things that you guys ask, all the answers are already on my channel. All you have to do is just do a bit of search. Robin Wong? SF10, ta-da! Yeah, share. Copy. Okay, I'm gonna put it on the chat here. All right, so Lint, please go to this, this particular video here. If you wanna find out about the, my thoughts on SF10, I've owned it for about a year. I gave it to a friend because the friend's, two of his cameras died. So he has no camera and at that time he was unemployed. So I thought, okay, just take this camera, go out. He is a street photographer. So he did some street photography. So anyway, coming back to your question, where were you? In summary, right? In summary, uh, image quality, excellent. No complaint about that. I don't like that the autofocus is quite unreliable. It is too slow for street photography. And then some people say, oh, but snap focus, oh, snap focus is useless anyway. That's entirely different discussion. But Bottom line is autofocus is unreliable. Handling is okay. It's, it's not bad. It's okay. Uh, but I would have appreciated if it has a tilt screen. That would have helped a lot. But yeah, autofocus bad. I wish it has image stabilization. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend. Unless you really want something small, something like, and you can live without image stabilization, tilt screen. Uh, you don't mind a slow focus or you want a manual focus, right? That, that's up to you. DW says, got EM1 Mark III, the EVF is bad. Other than that, it is in every way a perfect high-end camera. It takes three to four times the money to get comparable performance from other brand. Now, I want you to compare the EM1 Mark III with even the latest EVF from everywhere. Resolution, it will lose. Guaranteed. Resolution-wise, it will definitely lose. But I want to compare a few things. Number one, pan the camera around, left and right with any latest EVF, you realize that either it is as good or you'll be surprised it is better. A lot of the newer EVF, it has like crazy high resolution, but the refresh rate is very slow, especially if you can test it in low light, in dim, let's say a dim room situation where you have to use like ISO 6400, try to pan around the EVF. You'll see that even the best EVFs from any cameras, any of the more expensive cameras, it will like, and then the ref refresh rate is very, the, the, the view experience is very, very bad. That's number one. Number two, the EM1 Mark III's EVF has very, 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 very minimal delay. It's as if you look at the EVF, it's what happened in real life. There's like almost zero delay. It's like 0, 0.00 something milliseconds. It's less than zero point, I don't know. Let's see if I can find the information online quickly. EM1 Mark III EVF. Lag. Let's see if there's any information. I couldn't find any information for now from the quick search, but trust me, I mean, I worked for Olympus before I know. The delay is so small that it's negligible. Whereas the problem with the new high resolution EVF is like what you see and in real life, sometimes you're looking at the aftermath or the 
after image or like there's like a slight delay, it will be problematic if you want to capture the decisive moment. Do not underestimate the EMR Mark III's EVF. Yes, resolution wise, I know, I know there's like a lot more pixels in the newer, newer cameras. Even I tried the latest, uh, not the latest, the, I tried the Z5, which has more resolution, right? But I still prefer the EMR Mark III's, or not Mark III, but the Mark II's EVF, right? Hmm. Luca says, Robin, which lens for tilt and shift? I don't play with tilt and shift lenses. I've never tried them. And obviously, Micro Four Thirds, they don't have tilt and shift. Chan says, join Robin, come to Sabah, Gamata and Gawai, just around the corner. <laughs> hey, we need to work, hey. <laughs> I have shoots lined up during Gawai. So sorry, Chan. Maybe next time. RS says, thank you, Robin and Rob, for advice. Mabuhai from Manila. Hey, how are you? Anthony says, the new pricing for lenses seems like it's indeed intended to photographers away from wanting to buy OM system products. It's more like JIP wants the company to fail. Yeah, somehow it feels that way. Samuel says, now I want to know what shortcut do you have in the FN buttons? I disabled it for the ones at the front because I keep pressing it and it, I don't know if you realize the depth of field preview, it actually makes everything lag. There's like, it's not smooth, it's annoying. Roger says, Robin, I bought an Olympus grip for the EM5 Mark III. To me, it's no big deal to just loosen the thumb wheel to enlarge batteries. Loosen the thumb wheel to enlarge batteries? Okay. To change, to change batteries. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, easier to hold with the 75 to 300. Don't have to use a wrench to remove or put on. Okay, fair enough. But if I, I, if I want the, the grip, I'll just get the EM, EM1 series. That will solve the problem. Mike Cruz says, I just learned about the color adjust built into the Pan F and now I want one. Other cameras have to use OM workspace for this. Yeah. They purposely only make it exclusive to Pan F and if I'm not wrong, EP7 also has that, right? And all other cameras don't have that. Rakuten Club. Rakuten Club says, I got a Pan F and EM5 Mark II and love them for outdoor activities with wildlife. Care I got the TG7. And I want to warn everyone to not get a TG7. Okay. Why not get a TG7? What's wrong? DW says, what you say about the EM1 Mark III EVF, I agree. What I complain about, it will easily with highlight blown out in under bright daylight situation. I mean, it's an old camera, right? And what, what, what would you expect from such an old tech? At, at that time, they have a choice. I remember because when EM1 Mark III came out, uh, I have left Olympus, but I was still very close with them and I was the ambassador. Uh, they have a choice of using the newer EVF or the older one, but the newer EVF is not up to the standards. It lacks, there's a delay, and it's not smooth. They prefer the smooth experience, right? So they have to choose. Yes, on paper, it looks like, wow, 3.67 dots or 5 point something dots, but it's practically useless, right? Yeah. Timothy says, hi from Washington. I like the greater depth of field on Micro Four Thirds cameras. Group portraits can be taken at F4 on Micro Four Thirds instead of F8 on full frame, getting an extra stop to either freeze action or use lower ISO. That's true. Yeah, some people prefer the more depth of field, right? Rather than blurrier background. Mm. Rakuten says, oh, to explain TG7 has so weak battery life. Ah, I think battery life shouldn't be just an issue, right? Uh, have you checked if you have enabled the GPS, if you have, or the Bluetooth, if you turn off the Bluetooth and GP, uh, GPS, the battery life will extend a lot. Recording Club says, and the logging make it worse, even off power off one day max. Also, like in this day of age, we also have a lot of, when we buy a camera, we'll definitely buy spare batteries, right? Like when I go on a job on my EMR Mark II, which supposedly have a very good battery life, I'll carry like four or five batteries with me. Even sometimes I only use two for a full day shoot, right? Yeah. Anthony says, APS-C size cameras do not have the availability wide angle lenses intended for APS-C cam cameras like Micro Four Thirds does. Yes, availability is also a problem. Time check, it is. 12 minutes past midnight here in Malaysia. And uh, we have 135 people live. Wow, that's a lot. I'll drink some water. I've caught up with the comments. Yay, finally. <laughs> I was so behind earlier. And I have one more set of photographs to share. I think just six photographs to share. And then I'll reply to as many comments as possible. And then we'll wrap up the night. Right, I'll drink some water first. Yay.
Okay, I'm gonna address this this comment here. Rakuten Club can't be charged while filming or time lapse or the camera is not an upgrade to earlier. I understand your grief with the camera. I understand that you may have regretted buying T the TG7 and then the TG7 is not for you. Uh, it doesn't suit your use case or when you, you bought the camera, you've used it, it, it falls short of your expectations. I understand, right? And I, I sympathize with you, but TG7 is also the camera that you can just drop, pick it up, turn on, no problem. And when people go to say uh, Iceland, for example, they bring their expensive uh, Canon, Nikon, whatever, Sony or even Olympus, Panasonic, they bring an expensive camera, they may be weather sealed or freeze proof, but in those situations, anything can happen. What I always tell them is get a TG camera from Olympus, whether it's TG6, TG7, while all your other cameras will fail, there is a higher chance of failure. The TG7 will survive. It's the only camera that can click. Well, I understand that your, your issues with it, I'm not denying it, I'm not minimizing it. They are very valid. I also wish that uh, all digital solutions could have improved rather than having a minor upgrade over the TG6. One thing is I prefer to, for it to have a new sensor and a new lens. They've been using the same sensor and same lens since forever. Uh, and one inch sensor will be uh, welcome and a new faster lens will be better as well. I understand. I have my own complaints as well, as you see, but it is also the kind of camera that will not die. You get what I mean? So I wouldn't brush it aside so quickly. All right, we have a new member. Hey, DW, welcome to the membership program. And I look forward to interact with you more. Thank you so much for the support. All right, now I'm gonna share the last set of photographs. <laughs> Sorry, it took so long. There's uh, a lot of comments to go through. So yeah, of course, a uh, Kampung Baru because it's a Malay village and uh, for the Muslims, dogs are considered unclean. So they don't have dogs as pets, uh, it's forbidden. So we have a lot of cats running around. A lot of these cats are not strays. They are uh, house pets, right? They are pets. So they do come out running around from time to time and they are very, very friendly to strangers. And I love cats. If you have seen my channel, if you follow my blog from earlier days, I have a lot, a lot, a lot of photos of cats, right? Yep, and uh, this is just one of the few random scenes that I cannot fit in the first series of photographs. You have to be very strict in your curation when you're editing a photograph series for a project or a story. And this doesn't fit anywhere. It doesn't tell a story of Hari Raya. It doesn't tell anything about the festive celebrations. It doesn't tell anything about Kampung Baru. But I just found that this is a very interesting photograph to take. And there are some abandoned cars there, I observe, and I've, I'm attracted to the green colors of this car. And uh, coincidentally, there are also leaves growing out from the tire. So the green colors on the leaves matches the colors on the car, which I thought was pretty cool. And yeah, another abandoned car. This is a different car. Obviously, this is a white Proton Saga uh, surrounded by uh, overgrowing bush right and i intentionally go using low angle using the tilt screen and i wanted the blur foreground so i was shooting wide open f1.8 to get this shot this was a 25 f1.8 in case you guys were not here earlier uh, for me to share about the camera and lens that i use it was the em1 and 25 f1.8 i shot at f1.8 uh to get some blurrier background so that there's a leading uh transition from front all the way to the subject that's in focus which is the car and the car itself was bright white in color, which makes it stand out from the green bush, which was easy, right? So I don't have to do anything for the car to stand out. Another panning shot, there isn't this particular shot. Actually, I like this panning shot better than the previous panning shot that I shared earlier. Uh, let me just go to the previous shot in the Kampung Baru. There was a panning shot here. Let me just find it for you. So this is a panning shot earlier. The reason why this I, I prefer this because first I got closer to it and secondly it's a lot uh I mean clearer compared to the previous one but uh this made it to the final edit or uh, it fits the story better because both men or the 
persons on the bike. They were wearing the traditional costume, which fits the celebration. So it's showing that on this day, they were dressed in the traditional costume and they were zooming around in their motorbike, right? But if you were to ask me which photo is better, of course, I prefer this particular photograph. This is a better photograph, right? And I have one last photograph to show, which is this one. So this is a migrant worker. He's not a local Malaysian. Uh, he's a migrant worker, but because he's also Muslim, so he's also celebrating uh, Hari Raya and he's just there chilling, waiting for his friends to come and then I think they'll go out for a celebration, which is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> All right, that's all I have to share on the photographs. I hope you guys enjoyed those two series of photographs. One is from the, uh, the higher air celebrations at Kampung Baru, and the other one was just random shots that I found at Kampung Baru. I'm gonna drink some coffee, There's a few drops left. And uh, some water, and I'm gonna reply to some comments, and then yeah, and after that, we will call it a night. It is already uh, 19 minutes past midnight. Okay. Hmm. Rakuten Club says, but to be on topic, I was searching nice micro four thirds lenses, but they are too expensive. I decided to get the micro four thirds to Nikon adapter as I have dozens of old Nikons. It's awesome. So you're using manual focusing. Oh, no autofocus, no go for Robin. Sorry. We are like at the different parts of the planet. Hey. All day says, would you move from Imam Mark II to Sony A6700? No way! If I'm going to move, I'm going to move to full frame. A6700 and Imam Mark II is like, not much difference. I'd rather take the Imam Mark II. Have you held the, the A6700? It's so uncomfortable in hand. Like nothing beats this beefy grip on the Imam Mark II. And the Imam Mark II has powerful image stabilization, which the A6700 lacks. Yeah. Racketing Club says, yes indeed, but the screen is easily scratched. Why worry about scratch screen? <laughs> like, that's not the point of the camera. Like, you are missing the point of TG7, right? Yeah. Kitty Pong says, Hi from Thailand. I used to use Sony, but last week I got an OM5. Congratulations. And an Olympus Pan Am for a great price. And now I remember how much I love the Micro Four Thirds system. Welcome back to the system. Rakuten Club says, Awesome colors. No worries. Lord Mitek says, Micro Four Thirds suck for landscaping, right? Only good for portraits. What are you talking? I take a lot of landscape photos. I have a lot of landscape photographers shooting with Micro Four Thirds. Hmm. Then Timothy says, my 150 to 400 autofocus slows down at minus 10 degrees. The rating is very accurate, yes. When temperature slows down, things just starts to fall apart, right? Like batteries, battery life is very short. Sometimes the camera will act wonky. It might not even turn on, yeah. Hmm. Micro Four Thirds is a glorified phone sensor, but phone, phones don't use Micro Four Thirds. Yeah, so yeah. Like Lord Mitak, if you are so against Micro Four Thirds, if you think that Micro Four Thirds suck, that's what you said, right? If you feel that Micro Four Thirds is not for you, I can agree with you. Uh, you're free to use whatever that you want. Everyone is free to use. You can choose a uh, Fujifilm uh, GFX medium format camera, or you can use a Leica M series rangefinder if it tickles your fancy. But uh, the thing here is, is we are here to discuss about micro four thirds. And if you are not agreeing, why are you here? It's like, Let's say there's a, a, a book club that, that says, oh, they're, 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 they're reading Harry Potter, right? They're reading Harry Potter. It's a, a book club to read Harry Potter books. And you say, I hate Harry Potter. I think Harry Potter sucks. I think the writer doesn't know what she's doing. And you go there and tell them, Harry Potter sucks. And they'll all look at you like, what are you doing here? So that's my question to you, Lord Mitag. I am no disrespect to you. I, I respect your decision for saying Micro Four Thirds suck. You have made up your mind. It's not my job to uh, change your mind or to enlighten you or to, to, to convince you that Micro Four Thirds is not. Everyone has the right to decide what they want, right? So here's the question, like, why are you here? <laughs> yeah. Van says, thank you for sharing the photos, Rami. No worries, and thanks for being here. And you should get some sleep. Hey, are you working tomorrow, Van? Yeah. Okay, I'll answer one more question and then I'll call it the, the night. Casper says, which would be the better choice if I can get from the same price? Even five 
Mark II or EM1. I will go for EM1, uh, better build quality. The magnesium alloy body is stronger than EM5 Mark II. Yes, yeah, so depends on what I do. Hey, uh, okay. I'll still go for EM1, no matter what. Uh, better electronic viewfinder. Uh, overall, it has face detection, autofocus built in. EM5 Mark II does not. All right. Okay, guys, that's it for tonight. I hope you guys have enjoyed this session. Uh, I've talked about using Micro Four Thirds for my professional shoots. I've talked about using Micro Four Thirds for my uh, hobby, for my projects. <laughs> I've also shared plenty of photographs. One set just taken yesterday. Uh, it was the Hari Raya celebration at Kampong Baru in Kuala Lumpur. I hope you have enjoyed the photographs. If you found my sharing beneficial, if you've enjoyed looking at my photographs, please support me. There are various ways you can do that. First, you can buy me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. Links in the description below on how you can do that. Or you can join the membership on this uh, channel. Uh, you can just click the join button and you can get a lot of different perks as well, all right? And all these contributions that you guys have given me from the Super Chats, some of you have just joined a member, will come to the membership. Uh, I appreciate your support. I'll definitely create more content. I'll share them fresh content every Monday. Members get to see them 24 hours earlier than everyone else. I get to reply to your comments earlier than everyone else. And live streams on Thursday nights as usual. Until the next one, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.